basic law is now hereby called to order. I'd like to recognize the presence of our very own Senate President, who was a principal author of this measure, a fellow Mindanawan, no other than Senator Aquilino uh, Coco Pimentel III. Sir, thank you for coming. Uh, of course, uh, we have with us our minority floor leader, who is also a principal proponent of uh, BBL in the previous administration, and hopefully will help me uh, as well craft a um, uh, constitutionally sound uh, autonomous uh, measure for our brothers in the South, no other than Senator Frank Dillon, sir, good morning. And we have with us a fellow seatmate, a good friend of mine, um, a very hardworking senator, uh, Senator Wynga Chalian. And uh, in a short while, we'll be joined by our committee chair, uh, Senator Sani Angara. And um, the reason why I'm hearing this now is uh, I was designated by my colleagues, being a fellow Mindanaoan, and I know the uh, very busy schedule of our Senate President. Um, so I took um, this opportunity to be able to sponsor this measure on behalf of our brothers and sisters from Mindanao, being made the subcommittee chair for Bangsamoro Basic Law. Um, we'd like to acknowledge first the guests before we give our opening statements. May I ask the committee secretary to uh, acknowledge the guests, please? Thank you, Burns. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Senators. Um, we'd like to welcome to the Senate the Presidential Advisor on the Peace Process, Secretary Jesus Duresa. Good morning, sir. With him is the Chair of the GPH Implementing Panel, Yusek Nabil Tan. We also have from the Department of National Defense, Yusek Cesar Yano. From the representing the Office of the Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, we have Brigadier General Raniel T. Ramiro, AFP, Chief of the AFP Peace Development Office. We have Colonel Taharudin Ampatuan, MNSA, Philippine Army, Chief of the Bangsamoro Peace Support Division. From the Bangsamoro Transition Commission, we have the following commissioners, Commissioner Attorney Jose Lorena, Commissioner Maisara Dandamun Latif, Commissioner Raisa Jajuri, and Commissioner Ferdowsi Abbas. The DILG is represented by Dr. Jaime Ramirez from the Office of Muslim Affairs. We have Attorney Salma Pir Rasul to represent the Philippine Center for Islamic Democracy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Um, I'll just give a short, brief opening statement. You know, this is our first historic public hearing of the Senate on the proposed Pangsa Moro Basic Law. I was first approached by the Senate leadership to head the subcommittee on BBL, and it dawned on me, you know, the gargantuan task ahead. We are going to deal with um, a document that is 126 pages long, with 18 articles and 267 sections, uh, your honors. But being a Mindanaoan, I am completely aware of its importance to all of Mindanao, much more to the Bangsamoro people. We have experienced the ill effects of armed conflict in Mindanao. It, brought political, it, br it brings political instability, slow economic growth, and uncertainty to our people. And for decades, we've been searching for that elusive, just and lasting peace in Mindanao. And admittedly, all these years, we've failed. I earlier said that this is historic. The truth is we're presented with another opportunity, a golden opportunity, to track the path of a just and lasting peace in Mindanao. I must stress the confidence-building measures undertaken by the MNLF and the MILF with the AFP the last few months especially are worth worthy to mention. The MILF, our brothers in the MILF, helped the AFP in pursuing the remnants of the Maote group that wrecked havoc and turned Marawi City into rubble is one of the face-saving measures and uh, confidence-building measures, rather. Uh, they also helped in the rescue of several hostages, and I'd like to make special mention of that. Our brothers in the MNLF are helping us capture and neutralize members of the Abu Sayyaf group 
in the Basulta area, and we're very appreciative of that effort as well. Both sides are now coming to the negotiating table with perhaps the highest level of trust and confidence in each other, never before seen in decades. We have to seize this golden opportunity, my friends, and time is of the essence. Also, as I mentioned, no, the, one of the overriding considerations is search for just and lasting peace, not only Bangsamoro, but the whole of Mindanao and the country. They say if there's a hiccup in Mindanao, the whole country gets a cold and gets sick. And we've seen this um, when there are conflicts in Mindanao, in my beloved area of Mindanao. We have problems with uh, economic development, tourism, not only for Mindanao, but for the whole country. And uh, that is why we're all here today. I believe all of us has a stake. All of us have a stake in this, and we have we have um, asked the BT BTC, the Bangsamoro Transition Commission, and we'd like to recognize uh, Senator Sani Angara, our chairperson of the committee. Morning, Morning Senator. Morning, Chairman. Chairman, um, we had asked the members of the BTC or the Bangsamoro Transition Commission to present to us um, their. Um, version of the BBL after several months of consultation and uh, marathon hearings. We also invited legal experts, academicians, and advocates for their wise counsel. Uh, I take note that, uh, if you take note, there's not too many of the uh, resource persons here today. It's because of the short notice. Uh, I promised, uh, I was only uh, appointed as the subcommittee chair last Wednesday before we adjourned. And I promised our good Senate President that we will hear at the soonest, we will hear, we'll have a first hearing the soonest possible time. And being the Christmas or holiday season, napakahirap na na maghanap ng resource persons. But don't worry, this will be the first of many, including out of town consultations that will be done in Basilan, Sulu, Tawi Tawi, as well as in Lanao and Maguindanao, as well as Cotabato cities and Sabuanga city. So um, I promised them that uh, we will be uh, visiting all these areas for an all-inclusive Bangsamoro basic law that we will try to pass. So with that, uh, my friends, we will be fair in uh, the discussions. We'll be, uh, I, I'm here to listen to all of your um, suggestions. And uh, we, were, we are here to listen as well. And um, what we will do to do a bit of housekeeping, uh, we will, uh, of course, recognize those who arrived uh, in the order of their arrival, um, starting with Senator Jolon, after which uh, Senator um, Gachalian, unless, of course, we want to give in to our uh, Senate President. But as a Mindanaoan, my final take on this, as a Mindanaoan, I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, that I will give it my utmost priority, the passage of this measure. Um, I will try my best. I am not a constitutionalist. I am not a lawyer. But my heart, as a Mindanaoan, is with you 100%. And I guarantee you that uh, we will try to come up with a Bangsamoro basic law or a basic uh, um, bill that will be ready by plenary, hopefully by March. We're going to do marathon hearings all the way the first quarter of uh, 2018. With that, I thank uh, all of you for coming, and I hope that the other guests that we have invited, especially the constitutionalists, can uh, lead the panel by our next hearing on the second week of January. So I'd like to recognize my other colleagues for the opening statements. Um, the minority leader, the distinguished uh, former Senate President, uh, Franklin Delon, is recognized. Sir. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Subiri, uh, Mr. Senate President, uh, the Chair of the Committee, Senator Angara, my colleague, <coughs> Senator Gatsalian, our resource persons, a pleasant good morning to all of you, and let me greet you an early Merry Christmas. First, this is, as, you are, as we are all aware, this is not the first time that we are undertaking an effort to, pre to enact a new uh, Bangsamoro Basic Law. Uh, if my recollection is correct, this is the third time that we are trying to uh, enact this measure. The first one was the infamous MOA AD, which caused a lot of 
dispute, firstly, because of lack of consultation that uh, uh, was the hallmark of the decision of the Supreme Court which declared the MOA AD unconstitutional. I was among the interveners in that case in the Supreme Court because I thought that uh, principally the um, uh, MOA AD then violated certain fundamental principles in our Constitution. In the 16th Congress, we actively pursued the enactment of the Bangsa Moro Basic Law. However, uh, uh, because of the complexity of the measure, uh, House Bill 4994 and Senate Bill 2894, which both uh, called for, for the enactment of the Bangsa Moro Autonomous Region Law, did not pass during the 16th Congress. So we are here again this morning, and let me congratulate our uh, chair of the Local Government Committee, Senator Agara, and the subcommittee chairman, Senator Zubiri, for uh, taking extra effort. We are now on a break, but we are here continuously working because we consider this measure very critical, very critical for our national development because it is only the stability and peace in Mindanao that we can achieve uh, the progress that we are all looking for. We are in the opposition, but it does not mean that we will oppose every measure presented before the chamber. And today, we are here to manifest our support to the enactment of the Bank Samoro Basic Law, which will address the dreams of our people in uh, southern, uh, in that part of our country. Of course, we have our constitution, which we cannot do away with because it is the constitution precisely which provides us the purpose and the unity that we have as a nation, and therefore we should have the constitution as our primary guide in all our deliberations, and at the same time, look at how we can achieve the dreams of our uh, Muslim brothers uh, in Mindanao uh, and, 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 and at the same time uh, be loyal to the uh, precepts or our constitutional precepts in our constitution. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, as you are aware, we, as I said earlier, we had a lot of resource persons and deliberations in the last Congress. May I suggest first that the Secretariat the Secretariat be directed, uh, that the Chair direct the Secretariat uh, and, the and, uh, and propose to the committee that we adopt all the uh, uh, view, I mean, we, we incorporate in this uh, committee hearings all the comments of the resource persons uh, when we were conducting hearings uh, in the uh, uh, June 16th Congress in order that we can, uh, we, we need, ha need not uh, go back to all of those issues or just uh, uh, reiterate them if uh, they're still uh, valid. But that will save us a lot of time. Uh, and, and the Secretary should prepare that and give all the resource persons uh, in this, in this, uh, into the, in this uh, 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 hearings and the members and all the senators a copy of what was uh, discussed. Uh, and, uh, we, we, and there should be a motion to adopt formally all of those uh, proceedings. The second part of uh, the, the second thing that I would request the committee to do through this uh, the, and the Recon Secretary to do so is to prepare a matrix of all the provisions starting with the MOA AD. The MOA AD, the uh, Bangsa Moro Basic Law in the 16th Congress and the proposed uh, uh, Bangsa Moro Law today that we are hearing. Uh, put them side by side so that it is easier to understand and to figure out what has changed and why and how it can stand uh, constitutional scrutiny uh, so that we can uh, uh, at least uh, move this uh, bill faster than we had seen it in the last Congress. There are still a lot, I am certain there were a lot of discussions, but we can structure the discussion so that uh, everybody will be given a chance to uh, express its, uh, his or her view. 
So, Mr. President, it is in that context that we will actively participate in these committee hearings. I will, I will reiterate that the opposition is in support of this measure, uh, but at the same time, we would like to, to, to make sure that uh, we do not do violence to our basic constitutional principles. And finally, Mr. President, let me relate to make of record that a few years back, while we were discussing uh, and had uh, on the agenda, on our legislative agenda, the Bangsamoro Basic Law, I made an effort to sit down with the Chief Justice of the Constitutional Court of Spain, because Spain had a very extensive history on uh, autonomy and uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the laws that govern the relationship between the autonomous regions and the Spanish central government. At that time, the uh, issue was the Basque region and the desire for independence or autonomy of the Basque region, which, by the way, the forefathers of uh, Senator Ming Subiri comes from. He is a Basque by descent, uh, and therefore, he carries with him the uh, blood of uh, the uh, autonomous and uh, this, uh, the autonomous, uh, the, the, the desire of his forefathers to have autonomy. Uh, today, however, uh, but I am re I, I'm recalling this experience because I left that meeting with the Chief Justice with a very, uh, and the mes message was very simple. We should avoid vagueness. We should be clear in what our intentions are. Because he relayed to me that because they wanted to have, because they couldn't get through certain principles that they wanted uh, incorporated in the law, they left it vague. So 50 years after, nagpapatayan pa rin sila. And we know what happened recently in the Catalan region when they declared their independence and the rest uh, is, uh, and, and the rest, as we say, is history. But that is the message I would like to put forward from the very start. Let us be clear w with the policies and the policies that we want to promulgate uh, through this Bangsamoro, because that is the only way that we can uh, throw, we, we can have the support of our people, uh, because uh, if we are not united in this, I'm afraid that we'll never reach the point which we want to do, get to with the enactment of this law. So with that, uh, Mr. President, I can, again, I assure you of our support for this, and um, let us work together as a chamber in order to come up with what we can uh, uh, for the enactment of this law. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much to our minority floor leader, our former Senate President. Sir, thank you so much for the support. It means a lot to us that the minority is uh, fully supportive of this measure. As you said, as a chamber, we're looking for long-lasting peace for our country. And um, we'd like to direct, I'd like to direct the committee, uh, Secretariat, to um, adopt. No? We adopt, if without, with the permission of my colleagues, uh, the proposal of Senator Gillon that the discussions of the last uh, uh, Bangsamoro Basic Law hearings be adopted by this committee uh, and um, also come up with a matrix on the MOAD AD as well as uh, the last uh, uh, um, Congress's uh, discussions and our BBL today that's being proposed by the Bangsamoro Transition Commission. Uh, we'd like now to recognize um, Senator, Senator yeah. we'd like to recognize the author um, the principal author of the said measure, uh, our fellow Mindanawan, uh, no other than um, Senator, our Senate President, Senator Coco Pimentel, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning to all. Uh, actually, I came here to listen. I have done my job. My job is to file the bill so that we can discuss it. But yesterday, in the speech of the President, he mentioned that uh, he is asking for the help of Congress to eliminate possible constitutionally objectionable features of the measure. So, but, but without specifying uh, which one. So that should be our uh, concentration if we agree, if we agree that there are uh, constitutionally objectionable features of the measure. So, uh, because uh, I, I agree with the minority leader, uh, the supreme law is our uh, 
constitution, we have no choice but to follow the constitution. So uh, that will be our primordial uh, task and all uh, F because the passage is no longer in debating. Uh, we, we all, we, I think we all want this, so, but we all want to pass a uh, constitutional uh, version because lawmakers also are not expected to knowingly pass an unconstitutional measure. So we must ourselves be convinced that what we are passing is constitutional. So yun po, I will, uh, as far as I'm concerned and my staff are concerned, uh, all our energies will be uh, geared towards making this measure uh, constitutionally acceptable from our point of view and hopefully convince uh, other lawmakers. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Senate President. We'd like to recognize, uh, well, Senator Gachalian will just uh, ask questions later, clarificatory. And uh, Senator Angara, would you like to give an opening statement? Uh, yes, uh, thank you uh, to the Chairman of the Subcommittee, Senator Zubiri. I'll keep my remarks brief so we can hear. Magandang hapon ho sa ating mga kasamahan sa Kamara at saka kay Sek Dureza, Yusek Tan, at sa ating mga resource persons ngayong umaga. Well, we've made it a priority of the Local Government Committee because the President has given us a deadline. And uh, uh, I think I can think of no better uh, persons to head this than, uh, of course, uh, there are two Mindanaoans in the chamber, and I think uh, one is a, an expert on federalism. That's the uh, also a bar top notcher, but hindi ko siya pwedeng mautusan dahil boss ko siya dito sa Senado. Kaya ang uh, hiningyan ko na lang ng tulong po yung ating kabarkada na isang magaling na taga Mindanao din, dating majority leader at may puso para sa Mindanao dahil yan po ang uh, uh, lupa ng kanyang uh, pinanganakan si Senator Mig Subiri. Thank, I thank him for taking up the cudgels for Mindanao and taking up the challenge. And uh, I appreciate the remarks and the statement of support of our good minority leader, Senator Drillon, who has seen uh, the ups and downs of this process. And alam naman po natin, kung hindi dahil sa pangyayari sa Mama Sapano, kung saan uh, nagbuhis ng buhay ang ating magigiting na kapulisan at sundalo, uh, malamang batas na po ito ngayon. So wag nating kalimutan yung kanilang sakripiso. Uh, let's proceed with uh, fervor and uh, um, and passion to give justice to the sacrifices of all the men, not just those who died on that uh, day in Mama Sapano, but also there are forebears. No? Isang daan na taon na ito at nagpapasalamat tayo sa mga dating administrasyon at sa kasalukuyang administrasyon dahil madali lang pong sabihin na wag na natin ipursue yan dahil prioridad yan ang dating administrasyon. But no, the President has seen the urgency and the need for this and uh, uh, I, I agree with all, the, all that has been said, uh, but we must remember that uh, we must build an autonomous region based on justice. Bigyan natin ng justicia yung ating mga kapatid sa Mindanao, pero pati na rin yung mga nagsettle doon. Balansahin po natin yung interest ng lahat ng nakatira doon. At uh, kung hindi natin ito ginawa ng tama at hindi natin ito uh, nilagay sa tuwid, eh, hindi tayo magkakaroon ng progreso. Uh, sa darating na panahon. We need it for regional stability. We need it for economic development. For the first time in our history, we have uh, Mindanao growing faster than the rest of the Philippines. And this is a trend I hope will continue in the coming months and years. Maraming salamat, Mr. Chairman. Mabuhay po. Thank you very much uh, to my distinguished chairman, uh, Sani Angara. At tatlo po tayo Mindanaoan. Yung isa expert din sa bakbakan, pero sa boxing, si Senator Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> With apologies to the gentleman from Sarangani. <laughs> Sarangani he's, the, he's a different level. He's the world champion. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, um, and we'd like to also uh, take note of what our chairman said. We'll try to make this all inclusive. So we also invited actually our brother Lumads uh, and of course the LGUs for our Christian brothers as well, not only from Western Mindanao but also uh, Eastern Mindanao. Um, unfortunately, because of the holidays, it is December 20 today, five days to go before Christmas, but we are here working hard to make sure that we have a, a long-lasting peace in our region and uh, that we can start uh, the process going. So to start, we'd like to hear, with, uh, of course, with the permission of our Secretary, Secretary Jess Duresa, if you don't mind, Sec, maybe we can start with the BTC on their presentation. And then we could ask you some comments after uh, on the presentation. 
Is that all right, Secretary? Uh, we do respect. Maybe if I can just oh, make yes, an please. opening statement and Being then the, uh, the ball will be really in the court of the BTC. Yes. Okay, okay Mr. Secretary. My apologies. Um, we, we have to follow protocol and uh, the presidential um, OPAP, which is the Office of the uh, Peace Process of the President of this administration, uh, will give his opening statements led by Secretary Jess Duresa. Sir, you are now recognized. Thank you very much. Uh, Senator Subiri, our uh, Senate President, Coco, Senator Angara, my uh, good friend, uh, Senator Drilon, Co uh, Ilongo, and uh, Senator Gatsalian. The other members of the uh, group who are here, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm just here to uh, just say generally that we really admire and uh, we are very grateful that the Senate, despite the recess of the session uh, last December 15, had taken time out on their precious time instead of being with their constituents and their families back home, but to start already discussions on this very important legislation before us. We have already gone through the negotiation stage with the MILF. We have done an agreement with the MNLF. And uh, we are now actually on the so-called implementation stage of those agreements signed previously, the uh, Comprehensive Agreement for the Bank Samoro and the FAB, of course. We are now at a crucial stage where uh, with a new president in place who comes from Mindanao and who is openly asking for public support that we pass the law that will address what he re always refers to as to redress a historical injustice committed on the Bank Samoro. And we feel that in so doing, we also address the root causes that bring about uh, this uh, rebellion and those co-Filipinos have risen up against government. So we trust that the Senate, with all the previous experiences, we learn from them and then perhaps now under the new leadership of the Senate and the other members of the Senate, we can already craft a law that will respond to the aspiration of the Bank Samoro and at the same time, very importantly, the question of constitutionality. We have heard some questions before on the first BBL about issues on constitutionality. When President Duterte appointed a new BTC, or the Bank Samara Transition Commission, it was his marching order that as they do their work, they must always be aware of the issues previously. And we will hear from the BTC on how they were able to navigate these uh, constitutional issues before and how different the new BBL is uh, from that where there were questions raised, proper or not, on the constitutionality of the proposed law for the Bank Samoro. So we really welcome the effort now of the Senate in looking at this. Uh, if, if there are constitutional issues, if any, then we can work together along this line. Uh, but we hope that whatever will be the outcome of uh, the work of the Senate will be a total output of not only the Senate, but the whole Filipino people. We understand there will be consultations to be done uh, after this hearing here. And we hope that you will be able to hear also the views of everyone, those who have opposed it, those who are against it, those who are in favor, or those who have some revisions to propose. And we hope that our very competent and uh, able members of the BTC who are our resource persons will be able to shed light clearly on those issues. We welcome the statement of Senator Franklin Drillon about the need for a matrix to make it very clear where are we different from where it was before. And we have also other Senate versions uh, that have been filed also together with the BBL of the BTC. We can see immediately through this matrix where everyone can stand for and where there is a need to work some more on this. 
So we'd like to thank everyone, and especially the Senate, for taking time out on this precious holiday season to start working on the BBL. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Secretary. Um, also, being a fellow of Mindanao, you know the stakes are high for us here, and uh, that is why we're giving it our utmost priority. Um, would you, Sec. Uh, Nabil Tan, like give an opening statement, a short statement, or shall we proceed with the briefing? Uh, no more, uh, Your Honor. Uh, we'll just uh, help in the deliberation later. Thank you very much. So the ball now is with the Bangsamoro Transition Commission. Uh, it is very important that you give us a presentation, clear presentation, so that we may get an understanding of the proposals made by the Commission. Um, which uh, one of the commissioners would make the presentation? Commissioner Latif? Yes, ma'am. Uh, you are now recognized. Yes. Uh, good morning. Uh, it's good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much. On behalf of the uh, BTC and, Co and Chairman Gachali Jabbar, we would like to thank the Senate, the Senate President and members of the Committee on the Local Government Unit and the Subcommittee for inviting us here and um, presenting to the Honorable and August Hall the salient points of the Bank Tomorrow Basic Law. Uh, at the outset, we'd also like to stress that when we were appointed as Commissioner, we had in mind the constitutionality of the work at hand. So as much as possible, our work uh, uh, has been in accordance with the mandate of the President. And also, um, in regards to the issue on MOA 80, uh, it, ha we ha uh, it has no um, reference. We did not make any reference to the MOA 80, considering that um, the Bangsamoro Basic Law is a new, is a totally different document, a restructured document. So it has no reference to the MOA 80. With that, uh, just to um, clarify some issues, we'd like to go on with the salient points or hal highlights of the Bank Mar Basic Law. So, um, the President has already mandated us to uh, race forward for the Bank Samara Peace process. And the first one was uh, the appointment of the expanded uh, Bank Samara Transition Commission. When we say expanded, um, it included not just the addition of the MNLF members, which Commissioner Ferdowsi here is uh, actually representing from the MNLF. It's a convergence of all fronts, the MILF and MNLF, and also the indigenous people and the Christian settler community um, and women and academe and other sectors who are very relevant to the Bangsamoro Basic Law. So the roadmap is act it actually involves two tracks. So the first one would be the BBL track, and the second one would be the federalism or constitutional convention track. We are, for, uh, right now, at present, we are in the first track. Okay. <coughs> Moving forward, um, the Bank Samoro Basic Law, actually, next slide, is a consolidation of all of these agreements. So we, we refer to the um, various agreements, guidelines, terms of reference, and joint statements beginning with the bank, uh, framework agreement on the Bank Samoro with its annexes on transitional arrangement and modalities, annex on normalization, annex on revenue generation and wealth sharing, annex on power sharing, and addendum on Bank Samoro waters and zones and joint cooperation. So as you can see, it is a product of 20 years of hard work and labor, beginning in 1997 up to the present, 2017. So it is not an arbitrary uh, document. It has its bearings in the past, in the peace agreement, in the peace process. So pinaghirapan po talaga siya at pinag-isipan ng malalim. Next slide. So what is the framework agreement on the bonds tomorrow? We would like to walk you through first uh, on the annex on transitional arrangements and modalities. First, we had the roadmap, which we are actually uh, trying to follow right now, then the basic law, which is the Bank Samoro basic law, the exit agreement, if and when there is already total compliance by the GPH on the agreed um, guidelines, terms of reference, and the transitional mechanism and modalities. So with that, we have also the annex on revenue generation and wealth sharing. So we provide for a full fiscal autonomy because from the past experience with the ARMM, the problem was that it has not really experienced a genuine autonomy. When we say autonomy, it has to be 
genuine political and fiscal autonomy. So we ask for taxation and other sources of revenue to support its development needs, uh, proper wealth sharing, and then proper fund transfers from the central government to the bank tomorrow, and then a working and effective intergovernmental fiscal policy board. So on the matter of annex on power sharing, we also have uh, delineated the reserve, concurrent, exclusive powers, and the very important IGR principles. Because um, right now, the experience of the ARMM with intergovernmental relations is very murky. Because when we try to implement some programs in the ARMM, we usually have roadblocks on intergovernmental relations. Um, there is a continuing devolution from 27 years ago since the arm was established up to now. We are still trying to figure out what are those powers that has been devolved. So there is that kind of um, ongoing dialogue which has never been uh, settled yet. So hopefully with this Bank Samoro Basic Law, uh, we will be able to settle once and for all what autonomy is all about and what is for the Bank Samoro and what is for the central government. So the Annex on Normalization aims to ensure uh, human security in the Bank Samoro. We have to remember that the problem of uh, Bank Samoro is not just historical injustice, it's about human development. So then components of normalization, which is to trying to mainstream also the former combatants into the society. Then existing mechanisms and um, uh, me mechanisms to establish this normalization. Then the very important addendum on Bank Samoro waters and zones of joint cooperation. This is necessary for in order for subsistence uh, fishermen to be able to compete with the you know the larger uh, uh, in the our um, parlance for the marginalized fishermen to be able to fish and adequately support their family. It has been said before that when they were fishing, in a, when there was yet no uh, large commercial vessels, the Bang Samoro fishermen has adequately provided for their family. But right now, they are not protected, so they become more poor and in poverty. Because uh, in Tawi Tawi, almost uh, majority of the people are fisher, fishermen. And in Basulta areas. Okay, so. Um, what is the underlying um, um, principle or philosophy? Um, it's actually our basic right to self-determination. Underlying all of this is the recognition of the justness and legitimacy of the cause of the Bang Samara people and their aspiration to chart their political future through a democratic process that will secure their identity and posterity and allow for a meaningful self-governance. Indeed, it is a golden opportunity because when the MILF agreed to negotiate, it has now entered into the democratic arena, meaning it has not, uh, it will not, and it will not impose itself. It will respect democracy, and it will respect the rights of others. So it is uh, really, for us, it's one of the breakthroughs that the government and the MILF has entered into the Com Comprehensive Agreement on the Bank tomorrow. Next slide. We have to mention that the MNLF peace agreement is also one of the major sources of the comprehensive agreement. Why? Because in 1976, there was a Tripoli agreement. And this has a uh, bearing because it is the first document that seeks to establish autonomy in southern Philippines. 1976 from now is 40 years. 40, 40 years, I think, yes. So we celebrate the 40th year of the Tripoli Agreement, which um, until now, the MNLF uh, and the MLF claims that has not been fully implemented. And then the 1996 P Final Peace Agreement, which seeks to enact a law amending or repealing the Organic Act, Act of ARMM. This is not the first time that the ARMM uh, has been um, a subject of a repeal. In fact, if, if you can look to the 1996 peace, final peace agreement, it has already, already done so. This Congress has already done so in its history to repeal the organic act of arms. So if ever, it will, this will be the second time uh, for this August body to do so. So uh, the components of the right to self-determination as, as mentioned in the CAB, as first would be 
we deem that the status quo is unacceptable, that ARMM is uh, unacceptable. So there is a need to change the structure. Um, why? Because the problem of relation between the Bangsamora government and central government persists. The problem of uh, the relationship between uh, the Bangsamora government and local government units also persists. And um, we deem that there has been no genuine autonomy. There has been no genuine political autonomy. There has been no fiscal autonomy given. And that there was really no power sharing. It was just plain and simple uh, devolution. So we deem that the BBL should really ensure compliance with the CAB and the final peace agreement. It is also um, seeks to address uh, uh, catch-up provisions to address all the challenges, development challenges that we are facing. That's why we do not want something that is less than ARMM. We want something more. We want to benchmark only ARMM as a law that will give us the full autonomy and full uh, genuine fiscal autonomy and genuine political autonomy that we are seeking for. And in effect, uh, we believe that it will answer the Bang Samora question. What is that question? Actually, the president keeps on reminding us about historical injustice. Um, the, the full document can be seen in TGRC report about the documentation of the historical injustice committed against the Moro. If you want to refer to an official document, it's there. But for our purposes, we identified the following. Number one, if we have the BBL, then it would be a recognition of our Bang Samoro identity. We also, uh, it will also address the historical injustice, which is the root cause of the problem. Bang Samoro marginalization and the social injustices that has been committed, and it seeks to address legitimate grievances. And uh, for us, it will also address the alienation that we felt every time that uh, we feel that there is a government that is different from ours, a government that does not really um, represent the Bang Samoro. So the CAB for us will answer all of these questions. And in effect, we are not uh, really separating ourselves, but we are more, uh, as my colleague is saying, accepting the diversity of different people existing in this country. And we are willing to uh, be identified as Filipino and at the same time as a Bang Samoro. So this is actually a, uh, a very good recognition of that identity. So um, I, I believe that if you look at the purpose, it's really to establish a political entity, provide for the structure of government, and then as I said, the, in recognition of the justness and legitimacy of our cause, and the, our aspiration to chart our own political future through a very important process, which is democracy. And this will hopefully secure our identity, our posterity, and allow for meaningful self-governance. So that is basically our... And then, um, as Secretary Dressa has said, we would seek to answer questions that has been um, raised before and bothering us. The proposed BBL puts into life and spirit what is contemplated in the 1987 Constitution what is there? It, it is provided in Article 10, Section 1, that the ter territorial and political subdivision of the Republic of the Philippines are the provinces, cities, municipalities, and barangays, and there shall be autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao and the uh, Cordilleras as here and after provided. So there is really that um, constitutional precept that allows for this establishment. And in addition to that, in Article 10, Section 15, it has also provided that there shall be created autonomous regions in Mis Muslim Mindanao and in the cor consisting of provinces, these municipalities sharing common and distinctive historical and cultural heritage, economic and social structures, and other relevant characteristics uh, within the framework of this constitution and the national sovereignty as well as territorial integrity of the Republic of the Philippines. So this mandate of the Constitution has been uh, dutifully observed by the Bang Samoro Transition Commission when we drafted this new BBL. Other constitutional premises and mandates uh, which uh, the BBL is anchored on is 
uh, Article 12, the National Economy and Patrimony, Article 13, on Social Justice and Human Rights. Uh, what is Bangsamoro? Bangsamoro is at, uh, actually we have it in three, three concept, conceptual framework. Number one, it's not just an identity of the Bangsamoro people, but it is also a political entity. Uh, it is a political entity that will replace the ARMM. It is also a government or the Bangsamoro government that shall take uh, the place of the regional government. It is a secular autonomous government that is mandated under the 1987 constitution. It is not an Islamic state. Next slide. Uh, it has, uh, sorry, I hope you're, uh, can I go on and continue? It has, okay. So it does not form a separate state because this has been also been one of the questions before. Uh, the Bangsamoro territory shall remain part of the Philippines. It is categorically stated in Article 3, Section 1 of the BBL. And there shall be uh, created uh, under, un under the Constitution in support of that provision under the BBL. It states that, as uh, I would repeat, there shall be created autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao within the framework of the Constitution and the national sovereignty as well as territorial integrity of the Republic of the Philippines. So there will be the fear of secession actually is actually addressed in this provision that the BBL does not really form a separate state. And in fact, it, uh, it remains part of the Philippines and there will be, it remains uh, the, the territorial integrity and the national sovereignty of the Philippines is respected in the BBL. So that worries that there will be future secession should not really be, uh, what do you call it, is addressed in this provision. What is the proposed Bangsamoro territory? Uh, this is also one of the most contentious provision. Under the present uh, ARMM, we have the present geographical area, which is composed of the five provinces, the Maguindanao, uh, Maguindanao, Lanao del Sur, Bas uh, Basulta, which is Basilan, Sulut, and Tawi-Tawi, and Lamitan, and Marawi City. And then, in the uh, 2001 armed plebiscite, those municipalities who voted yes, which is Baloi, Munay, Nunungan, Pantar, Tagoloan, and Tangkal in Lanao del Norte, and the cities of Cotabato and Isabela, and the 39 barangays that has voted yes also in the 2001 armed plebiscite in the municipalities of Cabacan, Carmen, Aliosan, Pigkawayan, Pikit, and Midsaya in North Cotabato. And also, those qualified for inclusion in the plebiscite by way of a resolution or petition. This uh, shall form uh, the territory of the Bangsamoro and shall remain part of the Philippines. And the map that you can see is the North Cotabato barangays in the Bangsamoro core territory. So the shaded green is the 39 barangays in North Cotabato that voted for inclusion in the arm during the 2001 plebiscite. As for the six uh, Lano del Norte municipalities I have mentioned, uh, they are already as follows. And the six 39 barangays in the municipalities of Cabacan, Carmen, Aliosan, Pigkawayan, Piquet, and Midsayap in North Cotabato. They also will be asked during the plebiscite. So the conduct of plebiscite on the BBL is actually provided in the 1987 Constitution in Article 10, Section 18, which states that the creation of the autonomous region shall be effective when approved by a majority of the votes cast by the constituent units in a plebiscite called for the purpose, provided that only province, cities, and geographic areas voting favorably in such plebiscite shall be included in the autonomous region. So all regis registered voters in the provinces, in the cities, in the geographical areas covered in the proposed core territory of the Bangsamoro shall be qualified to participate in the plebiscite on the establishment of the Bangsamoro. That is in Article 15, Section 8 of the BBL. So it complies aptly with the conduct of plebiscite as required in the 1987 Constitution. 
It's also a manner of popular ratification. The plebiscite shall be conducted not earlier than 90 days or later than 120 days after the effectivity of the basic law. So if we are targeting March, March for the adoption of the law, then probably there would be a Bang Samoro government in June. I think March, April. April, May would be the um, conduct of the IEC or the information campaign and the plebiscite. That is also the timeline that was uh, given to us by the president before. Areas where the plebiscite will be conducted, uh, as I mentioned, are as follows already. And the more important uh, part would be the number, the fifth paragraph. Any LGU unit or geographic area outside the territorial jurisdiction of the Bang Samoro, but which are contiguous to any of the component units of the Bang Samoro, is included. Upon, this is very important, a verified petition for the conduct of a plebiscite of at least 10% of the registered voters. So there should be first a petition or a resol uh, resolution, at least 10% of the registered voter asking for inclusion two months prior to the conduct of the plebiscite. So any, any geographic unit or territorial jurisdiction who seeks to participate in the plebiscite can do so provided that they comply with its provision. The delimitation of the Bank Summer is actually the one of the innovation by the MNLF members of the BTC because they wanted to put a closure on the issue of expansion and uh, wanted to put a closure on the delineation of the territory of the Banks Moro. That is why they asked that a plebiscite shall be held in areas who were not able to join in the Banks Moro five years after the ratification of the BBL. So after five years, uh, or every five years thereafter, for a period of 25 years, there shall be a plebiscite to determine whether or not those areas who are not able to join would desire to join the Bang Samoro. That is in Article 15, Section 4. These are the contiguous areas mentioned in the Tripoli Agreement in 1976 and the 1996 Final Peace Agreement. So there is actually a basis for asking them because it is contained in these two peace agreements. So they may opt to join the Bang Samoro through a uh, periodic plebiscite. Provided that, again, there should be a petition signed by 10% of the registered voters or a resolution of the LGU of each province, city, municipality, or other contiguous geographic area opting to join uh, this new uh, this um, Bang Samoro government at least one year prior to the scheduled plebiscite. And then at the end of the 25th year, the Bang Samoro shall have been delineated and delimited. No other plebiscite for expansion shall be held. That is also in the same article. Uh, on the question of plebiscite, uh, these are, there are two questions that will be asked of the voters because there are two kinds of voters. Uh, the, the first one would be, do you approve of the BBL? And that is for the ARMM resident registered voters. The requirement would be if majority of the votes cast in the entirety of the ARMM voted in favor of, of the approval of the BBL, then uh, they shall be counted as uh, approving the Bang Samoro Basic Law. And then the next one would be do you vote for the inclusion of your city, municipality, or barangay in the Bang Samoro territory? This uh, question would be for the six municipalities of Lanao del Norte and 39 barangays of North Cotabato. And also the third category is, uh, the fourth category is for all other contiguous areas where there is a resolution of the LGU or a petition of at least 10% of the registered voters in the geographic area. So the requirement is also mentioned there. If the majority of the votes cast in each of the uh, cities, municip municipalities, uh, both for the inclusion in the Bang Samoro, then they shall be part of the Bang Samoro government. Okay. Zones of joint cooperation in the Sulu Sea and the Mar Gulf. I have mentioned that um, this is established for the purpose of protection of traditional fishing grounds of the. Sure. Is it all right uh, to my colleagues if we ask in between clarificatory questions? Uh, 
Uh, and you're also free to ask. Yes. Commissioner, but we don't have to go back again. Going back to the uh, slide, the previous slide. Plebiscite. Um, on the plebiscite, what if there are areas or provinces in the arm that want to opt out of the BBL? Is that an option I also? For example, if Lano Sur decides they don't ayon na nila magsama sa BBL, and the uh, and the question is, do you approve of the BBL? The whole Lano Sur votes no. Tanggal sila? I think the um, political political committee can answer because they are the one who drafted this. Also, oh, I'll let you finish, Siguro. Maybe you can just take note, uh, sir. Just take note, and I will ask you that same question later. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Please continue. So, uh, with regards to the zones of joint cooperation, its its importance uh, is is for the purpose of protection of traditional fishing fishing grounds uh, to benefit the Bangsamoro people uh, who is in the area. Uh, interconnectivity of the islands and the mainland parts of, the, of uh, to form a cohesive Bangsamoro political entity and ensure the exercise of the preferential rights of the Bangsamoro people, other than the IPs in the adjoining provinces and the resident fishers in the Bangsamoro over fishery, aquamarine, and other living resources in the uh, zones of joint cooperation in the Sulu Sea and Mora Gulf only. This is consistent with what is provided in the 1987 constitu Constitution that states that the state shall protect the rights of subsistence fishermen, especially of local communities to the preferential use of the communal marine and fishing resources, both inland and offshore. So the protection is really for subsistence fishermen or marginalized fishermen. Uh, that is the main philosophy behind this joint uh, zones of joint cooperation in the Sulu Sea. For Bangsamoro waters, uh, the map will uh, actually tell you what is this uh, zone, zones of joint cooperation. So those shaded in green is actually the zones of joint cooperation between uh, islands inter for interconnectivity purposes and also for uh, establishment of traditional fishing ground. Municipal waters would be up to 15 kilometers. The Bangsamoro waters would be 22.22 kilometers or 12 nautical miles. The zones of joint cooperation is in lime green. Powers of government in the proposed uh, Bangsamoro. There's nothing new that uh, these powers are, have um, established except that we just rearranged it uh, to really, because in the 1954, there was not su no such arrangement. So there is always a confusion as to who will implement what uh, uh, program or power. So that's one of the reasons why there's also this difficulty in having a fully developed autonomy when you don't really know what is your uh, jurisdiction. So that's the reason why we uh, categorized in, in, into reserve powers, concurrent powers, and exclusive powers. Uh, reserve powers are those which authority and jurisdiction is, is retained by the central government. And then concurrent is shared between the central government and the Bank Samoro. Note that the word central government is nothing new. It has been mentioned 85 times in Republic Act 1954. So it's really um, not a new term that we adopted. We only adopted it from the 1954 uh, law, which is central government and the arm. And then exclusive powers are matters over which authority and jurisdiction shall pertain to the Bank Samora. It can be found in Article 5, Section 3 of the BBL. What is the Bank Samora government? It's actually a parliamentary form, and its political system is democratic. Uh, it shall adopt an electoral si system that is suitable to this parliamentary form of government. The legislative and executive powers are to be exercised by the Bangsamoro Parliament and Cabinet. Why, um, why, we, why did we have this kind of uh, parliamentary form? Because if we look at the history of the Sultanate, of the Bangsamoro people, it's actually parliamentary. The Sultan has their legislative council and an executive council. So it is more in keeping with our tradition and our history and the way we conduct our governance, uh, implement governance in the areas of Bangsamoro. Um, that's the reason also why I ask um, 
my colleague before. So the sultans before wields this power, a parliamentary form. They said yes. So it's also historical. And the president shall exercise general supervision over, over the Bank Samoro to ensure that laws are faithfully executed. It is also very interesting to note that 14 out of 18 living framers of the Constitution said that the parliamentary form of government is constitutional. So it is uh, contained in their manifesto in January 2015 that such form of government is uh, constitutional. The intergovernmental relations. The relation between the central government and the Bangsamora government shall be asymmetric. The term asymmetric um, is defined in the BBL in order to clarify that it merely refers to the relationship between the central government and the Bank Samoa government as an autonomous region, whereas provided under Section 15, Article 10 of the 1987 Constitution, the autonomous regions are granted more powers and less intervention from the national government than territorial and political subdivisions. Uh, page 45 of the Paving the Path to Peace, where some of the constitutional convention members have been part also of the Peace Council. Uh, for reference also, this book by the Peace Council. Uh, the intergovernmental relations. This is one of the game changers in the Bangsamoro government because it seeks to establish a very effective mechanism of relationship between the central government and the Bangsamoro government because this um, involves more of effective, uh, effective implementation of programs and projects between the central government and the Bank Samoro. So there will be no more confusion as to who will implement what project. What are the mechanisms to implement this? If you see the Bank Samoro, basically it's, very, it's a very, very good document because it already uh, details what are the necessary bodies in order for autonomy to work. So if you can look at the first one, Central Government, Bank Samora Government, IGR, or Intergovernmental uh, Relations Body, it shall uh, resolve all issues and disputes through regular consultations and continuing negotiations in a non-adversarial manner. Number two, the Philippine Congress and Bank Samora Parliament Forum. Right now, there's a regional legislative assembly in the ARMM with no relation whatsoever with the Philippine Congress. They are passing laws there as we speak without any uh, relationship. But in the Bank Samoro Basic Law, we already um, addressed that gap because we established under Article 6, Section 8, that there shall be cooperation and coordination of legislative initiatives so that uh, both will be aware of what in, uh, laws are being passed and if that laws are not duplicative of each other. Intergovernmental Fiscal Policy Board, one, oh, one very good innovation also, address revenue imbalances and fluctuation in regional financial needs and revenue raising capacity of the Bank Samoro. This is really a very modern way of gover governance. If this is fully implemented, we will see a very modern way of doing things with uh, each mechanism already addressing all the gaps that ARMM has uh, not addressed. So the very important one is the Bank Samoro Sustainable Development Board to ensure that all the environment and development plans are harmonized. Is parliamentary form of government allowed under the 1987 Constitution? In um, Article 10, Section 18 of the Constitution, it says that the Organic Act shall define the basic structure of government for the region consisting of executive and legislative assembly, both of which shall be elective and representative of the constituent political units. So under the principle, this principle, the parliamentary form actually already fully satisfies both. There is an executive department and there, there is a legislative assembly, which is the Bank Samara Parliament. 14 of 18 surviving framers also affirm 
of the 97 Constitution also affirm that the parliamentary form of government is allowed in the Constitution. How do we select the members of the Par Bangsamoro Parliament? First, uh, the registered vote voters, of course, cast their vote votes. And then the Bangsamoro Parliament is elected. They elect a chief minister. The chief minister shall appoint the two deputy ministers and other ministers to form the cabinet. Why did we have a uh, election of the chief minister? Because if I may be candid about it, for the longest time, the ARMM government, governor has been anointed by the president or Malacanang. So the accountability is really very vertical, not both horizontal and vertical. This time, if we are given the chance to elect our own chief minister, then the accountability would be horizontal towards the one who voted him in the parliament. And also maybe vertical if uh, there is somebody who gave him uh, anoint if it's also a choice of the administration. But more importantly, they have a vote of no confidence. Anytime that that um, chief minister does not fulfill his mandate or fails to, to do so, then he can be voted out of uh, office. Just to clarify, so there, and under your proposal, there will opt out of a governor for our, a, a governor for the Bangsamoro region. It's going to be now elected by the members of parliament as yes. chief minister. Yes, yes your That honor. will replace the governor. Yes, your honor. Just to clarify. Okay, and then you. he will be assisted by two deputy ministers, one which will, one of which will represent either the mainland or the island. Uh, so if there is a chief minister from the mainland, there should be a deputy minister from the island so that the, there will be full representation. And this chief minister will actually form the cabinet. This is uh, one of the problems why the implementation of laws are very difficult. Because if you have a separate legislative, you need to lobby. You need to lobby for the laws that you want for your cabinet. In this formula, then if you are the Department of Education secretary, you know your problem, then you can already craft the laws that is needed, and then let the parliament adopt it, pass it in the parliament. So it's easier for any cabinet to have the uh, policy in place. No need for lobbying uh, to the other department. So Bangsamoro government is composed of the legislative and executive. The executive is uh, represented by the chief minister with the two deputy chief ministers and other ministers of the cabinet. The chief minister shall appoint the two deputy and all of the members of the cabinet. The Bangsamoro parliament, which is the legislative, is composed of 80 members. Formerly, formerly it was 60, but we increased it into 80 members to be more inclusive. 50% elected through a system of proportional representation or party representatives. We seek to establish a genuine party representation in the Bangsamoro, a principled and genuine party representation. So that um, we start with the electorate, education of the electorate. We want to have a fully educated electorate in the Bangsamoro so that we will have a party representative. Commissioner? Uh, before we recognize our chairperson uh, of the mother committee, we'd like to recognize uh, our uh, seatmate, chairman of the powerful finance committee, uh, no other than the hardworking and dedicated adopted Mindanaoan, Senator Lauren Legarda for attending. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Senator Salingara. Uh, good morning to our most beautiful colleague in the hall. Uh, Commissioner, I'm just wondering, in a parliament, the ministers are usually elected, they're members of parliament, no? Uh, I'm just wondering if are the other ministers required to be elected members of the parliament and the uh, bodies enumerated earlier like the fiscal uh, council, the De sustainable development council, is there a requirement that they be headed by elected members? Uh, majority of the members of the parliament actually, uh, of the cabinet are elected. They are elected. Uh, some will probably be appointed, but majority will be elected. So they will be part of the parliament. 
the cabinet is the, that members. is the minimal requirement that majority of the cabinet be elected. Yes. That, that is what the law they, states. They should be yes. parliamentarians. That is what the law states. Majority yes. must be parliamentarians. Yes. Okay, thank you. So, if I may continue, sir. 40% yes, uh, of this would be elected through single member districts or district seats. 10% would be sectoral reserve seats. The innovation now is that there shall be two reserve seats for non-Moro indigenous communities. In this new draft BB, uh, BBL law, the indigenous people are given opportunities in all layers of decision making and in all layers of governance. That is what is the most uh, innovative and new in this uh, Bangsamoro basic law compared to before on the rights of the indigenous people for representation in all levels of decision making. So, um, example would be the Teduray, Lambiangan, Dulangan, Manobo, Blaan, and, and Higao Onon would have two reserved seats in the Bangsamora Parliament. And in the Bang, um, and settler communities, women, women, youth, traditional leaders, and the ulama shall also have a reserved seat each. So, this is um, one of the inclusivity provisions that we have put. For the chief minister, she shall head the Bangsamoro government. He shall also be elected by a majority vote of all the members of the parliament. He shall appoint his two deputy ministers. And he shall form his cabinet. This cabinet majority of whom shall uh, be uh, from the parliament. Ex officio member, he shall also be an ex officio member of the NSC on matters concerning the Bangsamoro and NEDA. He shall be ex officio chair of the Bangsamoro police board and ex officio chair of the NAPOLCOM. What is the WALI? WALI is uh, actually a ceremonial function only. Mr. Chair, before we go to the WALI. Yes, please. Uh, if, if. Chief Minister, uh, sir. Uh, under our present unitary system, a provincial governor is subject to the general supervision of the government, of, of the president. Uh, but in cases where the provincial governor or any local government official would commit transgressions of the law. That local government official is subject to disciplinary power after, after due process uh, is followed by the disciplinary authority of the president. May we know if that kind of a disciplinary authority will be maintained uh, in this system or the chief minister can be removed only by vote of no confidence from the parliament. The, the president under the BBL has continued supervision? General supervision over the Bangsamara. Yes, general government. supervision. What about the disciplinary authority? The discipline. Uh, so that, for example, will the ombudsman have uh, continuing disciplinary authority? Uh, yes, will the president uh, have uh, disciplinary authority uh, over, over local officials as he enjoys it now? Yes, all of those things, uh, Your Honor, would still be the same. He will be subject to Ombudsman Disciplinary Authority and uh, also the President. Please, an uh, what about the loss of confidence? Is that also a ground to remove the... Uh yes, that's an additional accountability mechanism mm -hmm. required of the Chief Minister. Uh, yeah. When there is a vote of no confidence, there he then at that at that time he shall be removed. This government of the day, his government shall be removed. So that's along a, with his cabinet. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So that's a, a, a mode of uh, discipline and removal, which is not present in the present system. Is that? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Thank you. Uh, please continue. For the, for the next would be the wali. What is the wali? It's actually a ceremonial or titular head of the Bangsamoro. They shall only take ceremonial function like opening the parliament, dissol dissolving in the parliament. The appointment shall be appointed through resolution passed by the parliament. He or she shall be selected from a list of eminent residents of the Bangsamoro submitted by the Council of Leaders. The term of office. The first wali shall be appointed, appointed by the BTA for a three-year term. Each succeeding wali shall have a six-year term. So other duties involves to administer the oath of the uh, prime minister, including the chief minister and the parliamentarians, within 72 hours upon uh, two-thirds vote of no confidence. 
uh, of all the MP, so there should be two-third votes of uh, uh, no confidence, against the government of the day, the chief shall advise the wali to dissolve the parliament and call for a new parliamentary election. The wali shall call for election of the new Bangsamora parliament on a date not later than 120 days from date of the uh, dissolution. Why does the BBL protect the rights of all? Because it uh, recognizes, of course, all the rights in the Bangsamoro, all, of all people. The collective rights of the, con of the constituents of the Bangsamoro shall be recognized. Vested proper property rights shall be recognized, respected. There, there shall be created a transitional justice mechanism to address the legitimate grievances of the Bangsamoro people. And in fact, there's already a transitional justice commission that has, been, um, that has already rendered its report on these legitimate grievances, including the indigenous people, and all, such as historical injustice, human rights violation, marginalization through unjust disposition of their territorial and proprietary rights and customary land tenure. So this portion actually addressed the historical injustice against the um, Moros and the indigenous people. IP rights shall be recognized, protected in accordance with UN DRIP and all, I think, uh, subsisting laws, I don't know. And the custom, beliefs, and traditions of the people in the Bangsamora are hereby recognized, protected, and guaranteed. The Bangsamora government guarantees full respect for human rights. Indigenous people's rights uh, under Article 9, Section 4, provides that the Bangsamora recognizes the rights of indigenous people and adopt measures for the promotion and protection of the rights uh, of their native titles or pusaka ingat and uh, indigenous customs and tradition. In fact, in the uh, justice system, we provided all for the, also for the tribal justice system and the tribal university in the Bangsamoro. There shall be reserved seats in the Bangsamoro under Article 6, 10% of the Bangsamoro uh, members of the parliament, including two, shall be for non-Moro indigenous people and settler communities. Uh, in Article 7, Section 7, election for reserved seats for non-more indigenous people is also provided. And in Article 16, Section 8, interim cabinet, indigenous people's affairs shall be set up in the Bangsamoro. Meaningful political participation of women, the rights of women to meaningful polit political participation shall be protected and shall be protected from all forms of violence. They shall be represented in the Council of Leaders. They shall have reserved seats. There shall be uh, at least one uh, Bangsamoro women to be appointed in the Bangsamoro cabinet, minimum one, she should not be less than that, so more than that is good, 50%. Establishment of appropriate mechanism for consultation for women and marginalized sector, women in the Bangsamoro auxiliary contingent, and women in the Bangsamoro transition authority. Human rights in the Bangsamoro, it's actually uh, also established already in the ARMM. Article 5, Section 2, on the concurrent power, human rights and humanitarian protection uh, shall is recognized. They shall have their own bodies for human rights and humanitarian protection and promotion. And then there should be human rights commission which has already been established right now in the IRMM. Auditing, which is there also for additional uh, accountability, we added our internal audit, which is not actually in prejudice in any prejudice to the COA, it is all already, it is just complementary, and it is still part of the Commission on Audit. Civil service is also concurrent power, it is also part of the uh, existing civil service, and it does not prejudice in any way the existing civil service commission. The Bangsamoro, the Bangsamoro will not have its own constitutional commission, that is clear. We will not create our own COA, we will not create our own COMELEC, and other and civil service and all of these uh, human rights commission are actually existing already in ARMM right now. So without prejudice to the mandate of all the constitutional bodies. There are three, ju uh, four justice system, the Sharia law, the traditional or tribal justice system, the local courts and the ADR or, or alternative dispute resolution. Sharia shall uh, have supremacy in application only over Muslims. And then traditional or tribal Mr. justice system for the indigenous Mr. people. Mr. We'd like to recognize Senator Gutierrez. Commissioner, before we jump off to a different topic, no, and I was reading the BBL uh, a few days ago, I just want to be clarified. I know you mentioned this in passing, Kanina. 
uh, COA, civil service, and the other constitutional bodies. Uh, hiwalay ba ito pagdating sa Bangsamoro? No, Your Honor. They are actually part. They're regional offices. The regional offices. For yes. example, COA, the Bangsamoro yes. COA, the will Bangsamoro. be under... Without prejudice to the power of COA, under the COA. Under the COA National. Yes, Your Honor. In which, in which uh, COA can appoint yes, Your Honor. Uh, employees for the Bank Samoro yes. COA. How about the Ombudsman? We do not have Ombudsman, Your Honor. We, but Ombudsman is a constitutional... Yes. Uh, it, so it means that the national bodies that like Ombudsman are still existing. And they can establish... Uh, and they have jurisdiction over the jurisdiction Bank Samoro. Jurisdiction and they can establish regional offices Yes, Your Honor. It would be good if we have an Ombudsman that is really... I mean, uh, just assuming that they can establish in, uh, uh, offices in uh, Bang the Bangsamoro area. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Please continue. Thank you. I will just go very quickly because uh, I think this would be... And then relevant constitutional provision on policing. Uh, the, under the 1987 Constitution, the preservation of peace and order within the region shall be the responsibility of local police agencies. Policing slide, please which shall be organized, maintained, supervised, and utilized in accordance with applicable laws. The defense and security of the region shall be the responsibility of national government. That is very clear under the Constitution. So under Article 13 of 1954, the old arm law in implementation of this uh, constitutional mandate, Section 2 provides that the regional government shall give priority to the maintenance and preservation of law and order. There shall be a regional security force, and the law governing the regional security force shall be uh, consistent with the provision of the Constitution and Organic Act. That is already stated in 1954, and I think uh, that has not been declared unconstitutional. So policing in the Bank Samoro, likewise in the BBL, shall have primary responsibility over public order and safety. There shall be cooperation, coordination between the central government and the Bank Samoro government through the IGR mechanism that we have mentioned before. The Bank Samoro uh, police shall be organized, maintained, supervised, and utilized for the purpose of law enforcement, enforcement and maintenance of peace and order in the Bank Samoro. It shall be part of the national police. It shall be professional, civilian in character, regional in scope. So shall be still under the uh, part of the Philippine National Police. There shall be Bang Samoro Police Board, just there, and then shall perform the function of the National Police Commission in the Bang Samoro. The, banks, the board shall be part of the NAPOLCOM. It shall have power to investigate complaints against Bang Samoro Police. It's composed of 11 members, and the Chief Minister shall act as ex-official chair of the Bang Samoro Police Board. Uh, so there's a clarification of the policing in the Bank Samoro. The Bank Samoro will not have a separate police. There is no automatic or wide-scale integration of the MILF combatants to the PNP or the AFP. All police officers from regional director down to the municipal police shall come from the PNP. The MILF combatants will not become the police force for the Bank Samoro. If they wish to apply, they will have to comply with the requirements set by the National Philippine National Police. Hiring will still be conducted at the national level. There is no religious test for membership in the Bang Samoro Police. Disciplinary authority exercised by the police board does not remove the disciplining powers of the GPNP. Okay. There is a, the draft BBL gives the same powers to the chief executive of the Bang Samoro government. It's nothing new because as we have mentioned, it is under 1954 already. Fiscal autonomy and revenue generation in the Bank Samoro is actually the game changer, as my colleague has said in the Fiscal Autonomy Committee, because this time the Bank Samoro shall enjoy the maximum form of fiscal autonomy. So, the Bank Samoro government will have, is entitled to 75 share in all the national taxes, fees, and charges collected in the Bank Samoro, and then the Bank Samoro government can now impose and collect additional four national taxes to finance its where without to its uh, projects. The capital gains tax, the donors tax, the estate tax, and documentary, documentary stamp tax will be collected uh, and imposed by the Bank Samoro, provided that all the taxable elements are within the Bank Samoro. The sharing would be 75% for the Bank Samoro and 25% for the central government, except tariff and custom duties. Under the old arm law, it was 70% to ARMM, 35% to province, 
35% to the regional government and 30% to the central government. Commissioner? Just a clarifying question. On the taxes, we're lucky that we have with us the number one, um, I would not say taxman, but the revenue generator for government, uh, Senator Sani Angara, who is the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, will weigh heavily on the issues on taxation. But on the, on the 7525, would that mean that uh, most of the uh, salaries of our government, our regional government employees, be paid by the um, BBL, uh, Bank Samboro, uh New Administrative Region? Because technically, what it is now is the opposite. It's because national government pays for your teachers, pays for the police force, pays mm -hmm. for almost all LGU employees. But will it be now the reverse, or you're still looking at subsidies from national government? Mr. Commissioner Hauri? Judge Uri, sir. Judge Uri, sorry. Thank you, sir. Uh, actually, this uh, sharing of national tax collection is already in the ARMM. So it's nothing new except that uh, from 70%, which is the share of ARMM, it's now 75% for the bank tomorrow. But with respect to your question, sir, uh, that would fall under the um, black grant, which to be discussed later. Uh, the idea is to have a, a formula that would allow the Bank Samoro to get regular funding from uh, central government without need for uh, a law like a General Appropriations Act because the BBL will already provide for the formula. And so, yes, uh, most of the uh, uh, operations cost of the Bank Samoro government will be charged to that. Uh, to all the revenues that the Bank Samoro will get, including the black grant and uh, share in the national tax collection, um, uh, utilization of natural resources, and so forth. Thank you. I ask this because you know the, all the talk about federalism. Uh, this may be uh, this may be actually uh, passed ahead of uh, the federal discussions of the federal form of government. That's basically the position of a federal government, which is the, re we um, reverse the uh, formula today, which is the bulk of the revenue earned by the region or the province is retained by that particular um, region so that it may be utilized by its people. Uh, so um, we look into that further with our further consultation and discussions. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Chairman, Please continue. On, yes, on, on a related yes. matter, Your Honors, uh, has the BTC studied the actual figures? That, uh, that would equate to these percentages. Like if you put the block grant, if you put the 75%, magkano ho yun? Well, well, Mr. Chair, uh, 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 Honorable Senator, we only have projections, so we don't have the actual But based on actual figures, figures. Uh, what is the figure uh, for, uh, let's say, for 2017, for 2018? Well, for the block grant, Your Honor, uh, it may go up to double what the ARMM is getting. So maybe 70 to billion. 80 billion, billion a year. How about but for that the is only a projection, Your Honor, because yes, sure, we don't sure. have access certainly, to Certainly, we don't have perfect knowledge. Figures, yeah. Yeah. We acknowledge that. How about for the 75% uh, revenue uh, share? Magkano po yun? Uh, I will have to look into that, uh, Mr. Chair. I don't okay. have the figure right now. It's uh, Just to clarify, it's 75% of the revenue generated within the region or, or the whole country's... Uh, yeah, it's within the region, uh, no? Within the region. Uh, sharing in the national tax collection in the Bank Samoro. In the Bank Samoro, yeah. uh, Yes, Mr. Chair. So it, yeah. this is different from the uh, black grant yeah. that will cover uh, a share in the collection within yes. the whole Philippines. May I know the process that went into uh, the decision to have four, those, the delineation of those four national taxes, uh, the taxing powers given to the uh, Bank Samoro uh, state, no? Uh, I think DST, CGT, capital gains, uh, donor and estate. Uh, why those four in particular? And uh, Because there are, there's a whole uh, gamut of uh, taxes that can be granted, taxing powers that can be granted. When I'm just Chair wondering, what was the thought process which motivated the BTC to uh, choose those four, Your Honor? Well, Mr. Chair, that is uh, provided for in the Annex on Revenue Generation and Wealth Sharing. So in the negotiations between the government and the MILF, uh, after a lot of deliberations and Ibig bang sabihin hiningi yon or uh, naging kompromiso? Parang ganun lang yon. 
naging uh, kompromiso yon. Yes, we wanted more, but okay. that was uh, was agreed upon. Maybe you could give us a not not necessarily on the record. I don't want to prolong the hearing, but uh, just a little bit of a report on that one because we're very interested okay. in that. I think it's crucial to the future of the uh, Bangsamoro. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Chair. I just one, just one minor, one, just one point. Yes, please, sir. Uh, yes, it was mentioned that the present system, in so far as wealth sharing is concerned, is basically the same as that in the present ARMM, except that you increase it from 70 to 75. Is that a correct understanding? Yes, Mr. Chair, with respect to this uh, slide. Yes, yes. So the same conditions apply, except that the share is increased from 70 to 75. Yes, and also in RA 9054, there is uh, already a delineation of the 70% between the regional government and the local government. Uh, in the basic law, that is something that the parliament may and should enact uh, in the future, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Uh, Commissioner, uh, uh, no, sorry for my uh, ignorance, no. But apart from the taxes that were gri gi that were granted previously to arm, ano itong mga taxes na ito? The four taxes. So, in, Mr. Chair. so this is referring to the four taxes. Uh, so no, Mr. Chair. Uh, the ARMM has some taxing powers, but it's in it's uh, couched in a negative Can list. You? So, for example, they would uh, have uh, travel tax um, um, and so some other matters. Ito, yes. yes, yes, po. Some of which are, you, you mentioned earlier, travel tax. Yes. So there are four additional taxing powers. And then, dinagdagan lang and then, uh, no, uh, the ARMM has ta some taxing powers. Right. These taxing powers shall now pertain to the Bank Samoro right, government. Right. And in addition, they will get four additional right, right, right. taxing powers that uh, are erstwhile with the central government, but now will be given. Do you to remember the taxing, the other taxing powers uh, uh, existing with the ARMM? Hindi naman po lahat, no. Alam ko marami huyo. Maybe you can give us, you can cite some examples. No, we will provide the list, uh, Mr. Po. Chair, because it's in RA 1954. It's a negative list. So it lists down all the taxi taxes that they cannot impose. Mm. So we will have to look at the revenue code or the tax code that was uh, uh, enacted by the Armed Regional Legislative Assembly. Uh, the, the reason why I ask, I just want to understand no, um, the previous taxing powers and, in, and why did we add four more uh, components of those. No? So we just want to get a good uh, view on uh, the dynamics of the taxation. But the, I think the general idea is to give uh, the Bank Samoro more fiscal powers, fiscal autonomy, and therefore it's not enough to just give them a chunk of the collection, but to allow them to exercise more taxing powers and um, encourage uh, its taxpayers to pay because their taxes will go directly to the operations of the Bank Samoro government and will not be brought to central government. Uh, Commissioner, can you furnish this committee the, uh, the ARMM yes. present uh, tax components? Yes. yes. And then yes. the uh, uh, Senator Angara, the rationale behind uh, adding this additional four. Yes, Mr. Senator. Thank you. Um, I thank you very much, Sir Minority Leader. Yes, to another uh, important engagement to go to. We promise that uh, we'll have succeeding hearings, and we promise to do it uh, when we start sessions, sir, not on our Christmas break. But um, we would like to make we like to ask the committee secretariat to make sure that also the officials of ARM are here present in the next meeting, because the questions asked by Senator Gachalian is or could be answered by the minister or the i guess the ministry of health i mean ministry of finance of the arm I, uh, uh, I i know they have their own cabinet secretary for finance in the arm they'll probably be able to share us that, that information um yes commissioner lorena mr chairman in the arm presently there is no department of finance 
They only oh, have a regional man. treasurer. Ayun na lang. And the regional oh. treasurer is in the custody of the revenue code of the arm. So we can direct the regional treasurer to submit the revenue code. Yes, we can, we'd like to uh, ask the secretary to secretary to invite uh, these infor important officials of arm to also uh, answer questions from the committee. So would you like to wrap up, uh, Commissioner? So only, I think, two remaining very important slides. So Please go ahead. The Next one would be, the, would be the exploration, development, and utilization of natural resources. So government revenues generated from the exploration, development, and utilization of all natural resources in the Bangsamoro, inclusive of mines and minerals, shall, shall pertain fully to the Bangsamoro government, except petroleum, natural gas, and coal, and uranium. The same shall be co-managed and the revenues shared equally between the central government and Bangsamoro government. So for, with regards to the mines and minerals, the revenues shall be 100% for the Bangsamoro and uh, all fossil fuels will be co-managed and the, sh uh, the revenue will be shared equally by the central and the Bangsamoro government. Such, such a sharing scheme, 100% uh, Bangsamoro for mines and minerals, and 50% uh, between central and Bangsamoro government shall be applicable to all natural resources found in the Bangsamoro territory, both the land mass and waters under its territorial jurisdiction. So what is the annual block grant? The annual block grant shall provide the, it's an annual appropriations, uh, which shall be the share of the Bangsamoro in the national internal revenue, it shall be automatically appropriated to the Bangsamoro government and reflected in the GAA. And then the, the following shall be deducted in the uh, 10 years from the operation of the Bangsamoro government. Revenues from additional taxes beyond those already devolved to the arm within three years before and share of the Bangsamoro in the government income derived from the previous slide, which is the minerals and mines. What is the formula for the block grant? So, your honors, this is the formula if you will ask about the block grant. 6% will be from net national internal revenue collection of the BIR plus the collection from the Bureau of Customs where the net national internal revenue collection of the BIR is the sum of all inter internal revenue tax collections during the base year less the inter internal revenue allotment of LGUs as well as the amount released during the same year for tax refunds, payments for informal rewards, etc. So that is the formula for the block grant of the Bank Samoro. So, uh, if there it would be a special development fund for the Bangsamoro is 100 billion. This is a catch up to address all the development needs of the Bangsamoro. So, aside from the block grant, there is a special development fund for the twi uh, for uh, release stag in staggered terms for 20 years from the ratification of the BBL. And it's also stated there under Article 14, Section 2. There shall be a Bangsamoro Transition Authority which shall take over from the ARMM upon the adoption of the Bangsamoro Basic Law in a plebiscite call for that purpose, which shall be appointed by the President uh, with 80 members. The Interim Chief Minister and the BTC shall exercise all executive and legislative authorities respectively. And the BTA shall be MILF-led and uh, non-more indigenous communities, women, settler communities, traditional leaders, and all other sectors shall have representation in the BTA. So to foreclose any political interregnum in the governance of the region, the BTC, an independent body created, shall continue to exist to wind up and caretake the administration of the region until the BTA is constituted and set up. The amount of 1 billion per annum shall be allocated for the uh, BTC's operation, BTA's operation. The current ap uh, year's appropriation to the arm shall also be transferred to the BTA. The BTA is, dis is dissolved immediately upon the qualification of the elected, elected chief minister. So at the moment that the chief minister is elected in the Bangsamoro, under first Bangsamoro government, the BTA is automatically dissolved. And then it shall submit its report and recommendation to the Bangsamoro parliament the House of Representatives, the Senate, and the OP on the status of government during the transition period within 60 days from the assumption of all the parliamentary members. Um, lastly, it is very important. The whole development of the law is about closing the gap between law and justice. This is a statement of the framers of the 1987 Constitution on January 9, 2015, when they said that the BBL is constitutional. 
Bangsamoro is about the development of people, not about the constitutionality of words. The core principles of the 1987 Constitution in mandating a special status for the autonomous region is the human development of the people of the Muslim Mindanao and the Cordilleras. Hence, the public conversation should not be about semantics, but about people, their needs, their aspirations, their choices, about empowering them with environment and institutional framework for social justice. So with that, Your Honor, thank you very much for inviting the BTC for a briefing on the BBL. We would like to take your question. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, before I recognize Senator Lauren Legarda, uh, amongst um, um, all our colleagues here, we, we really truly understand the plight of our brother, Sister Moros. As a matter of fact, among the members here, with all due respect to the others, I am one of those who passed the most number of legislation for our brother Moros being the author of the Eid al-Adha law, making the second uh, holiday for our brother Muslims. Also, the NCMF, the National Commission for Muslim Filipinos, elevating it from a mere office uh, at one point in time because I recognize the needs of um, our brother Muslims and sister Muslims to be recognized in the national uh, scheme of things. Um, so rest assured that you have our full of support when it comes to social justice for our brothers and sisters in uh, uh, the Moro land. I'd like to recognize now Senator Lauren Legarda, Madam Senator, your record. Thank you very much, my dear colleague, Senate President, um, Chair, Chairman. I realize that first, the importance of the Bangsamoro basic law passage. Second, this definitely is so urgent and so important that we have to fund it. We know that the budget call is the first quarter, if not the first semester of the year, meaning January to March. So I'm concerned about the passage of this measure. Second, the timeline of the passage that might overshoot the deadline for the budget call. And third, perhaps we could schedule, Mr. Chair, Mr. Senate President, a finance-focused hearing so that we see the budgetary implications so that the cabinet members in charge of agencies who will help implement the BBL laws, law if and when passed are aware in their net submission because all of this will be ink on paper and hot air, so to speak, pardon me for our expression, if we promise something to our people which is not funded in the 2019 NEP. Remember, this is what happened in the tertiary education where we passed the law which was not fully uh, in the NEP, not in the NEP, and we had to augment it. So the timeline here is of utmost uh, importance and urgency. I know we just passed the budget yesterday and uh, everybody's still tired. I'm just looking forward because first, I agree, and it's about time that we give true, authentic, genuine liberation and uh, autonomy to our brothers and sisters in the South, our Muslim brothers and sisters. And we should not differentiate among um, uh, creed and, and color and, and culture. And that w should be a socially and economically inclusive Bangsamoro basic law. But all of these discussions, while um, we have still to settle the constitutionality and all the aspects of legislation have a timeline. So they have to be included. Otherwise, if we pass it, let's say, past June, wala na. So it will not be contained in the President's budget and will not be contained for implementation in the 2019 budget. That means, goodbye na, I will not be here. You talk to the next chair and the next Congress, it will be a new Congress because there will be elections 2019, it will be for the 2020 budget. So you pass a law in the first quarter, or in the first semester, that is unfunded for 2019. Can the people of Mindanao and our Muslim brothers and sisters wait for a one year and a half delayed implementation, assuming we pass the law? So that's uh, just putting things on the ground. While all these ideals and policies are good, I just wanted to... Uh, not break that optimism, but uh, 
but, but make us all realize the timelines here. So I'm willing to work with uh, our chairs, Mr. President, if uh, you allow, I hope you do. Yes, yes, yes. And um, of course, our uh, peace process, uh, our good friends, Nabil and uh, Sek Jess, we've been working on peace for decades now. Uh, and if I may say so, I have the perspective from the military point of view, strategic, from the peace advocate point of view, and from the lawmakers point of view, and from a finance point of view, and from an honorary Muslim. I'm Catholic, I'm Christian. From an honorary Muslim from the 1990s who has traversed Mindanao and has stayed with both the MI and the MNLF in their camps when there was no peace. So I would like to offer that helping hand, hands plural, to this committee and even to the executive to forge the long, elusive peace. And I think I'll be able to help there. Nabil knows that, yeah. So, uh, yung, yung budget, importante. Because I see all these Bs, B, 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 billions here. Alam ba ng mga kabinete yan, pag present nila ng kanilang NEP, nandun na ito. Eh, they will say, bakit namin ilalagay sa NEP, hindi pa naman na isa batas. So it's chicken or the egg. What do we do? They don't put it there because it's not yet a law. The law will be passed, it's not in the NEP. Well, the onus will be on me, Pag dating sa NEP at GAB, wala, mapasa natin end of the year, hahanapan ko na naman. I will have to cut somewhere to fund the BBL. So, I present the issue or the problem, I also have the solution. In case we don't pass it on time, don't worry. We will find the funding for it. But it would be easier and more, mas magaan, pag napasa na natin ng maaga, yung hindi dapat constitutionally infirm, yung maayos, assuming it, this is good for our people. So th that's just my statement. Thank you. Mr. Thank Chairman. you, Senator uh, Legarda. Uh, before I recognize you, Sen uh, Yusek uh, Nabil Tan, I'd like to make a proposal to the Senate President that when we come back on uh, June 15, or is it June 14? January, sorry, January 15. Is it right? January 15, that I will ask the Majority Leader to make the, the, the Committee on Finance, headed by our Tita Ganda, si Madam uh, Lauren Legarda, as um, the Secondary Committee, so that... Uh, that has uh, benefits on all sides because one, we need the funding for this and uh, we've given a timeline, ma'am, that we'll try to pass it on the first quarter. So by March, hopefully we'll be able to finish the debates and the, and the uh, procedures for second reading. Um, number two, almost all members of the Senate are members of the Committee on Finance. So then at least that way, all members can be represented during the committee deliberations. They can be invited so that they can share their inputs on the discussions. So I hope that's all right with the Senate President. Yes, Thank you'll you be my co-chairman. Thank you very much to the Senate President and Senator Subiru for your quick action on this. May I also, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, uh, suggest that before the Christmas break on the 23rd, that the presentation of the executive be made in an executive session with the cabinet members concerned. So infra, that's the PWH, DA, uh, livelihood, that's DTI. Um, huh? I mean, BBM. BBM, yes. So you can have your own small group so that they're aware. Because we lawmakers will do our part. We'll do our policy. But why is my clip here? Uh, but you should present it so that they know in January. Oh, sabi ni Senator Miggs, malupit daw ako masyado, pinapagtrabaho ng Pasko. So, uh, after New Year. Sige, but all I'm saying, bago sila mag-nep. Uh -uh. Sige, thank you. Also, um, Secretary Jess, you know, I'm surprised actually with the turnout of our uh, members of the cabinet in these uh, proceedings today. I was of the uh, feeling that this was a priority measure of the president. He mentions this in all his speeches. As a matter of fact, he mentioned this yesterday during the budget signing. Um, I would like to remind the uh, secretary, if you can let our friends know, definitely in our next hearing, I would really like to see, without having to be, me to subpoena the members of cabinet, di naman siguro kailangan, baka tawagan na lang, yes ma'am, uh, tawagan na lang po ni senator, ni secretary, uh, ni senator Coco, but we'd like to see here the defense uh, the Secretary of National Defense, of course, ably represented by you, Yano. But this is such a priority measure, no? without all due respect to Under Secretary. We'd like to have uh, uh, Secretary Delfino Rosana here, being also the head of the uh, 
Marawi Rehab uh, Program because all these issues uh, also involve uh, uh, development, no, economic development to our, our people in the area. Also, um, my Mista uh, Secretary Je um, June Esperon, uh, we'd like to also have uh, um, the other secretaries involved here, the SWD, other, other departments. We'd also like to invite the DILG uh, sec under Secretary Kui uh, to be with us, as well as DBM, uh, because uh, the budget will, shall be discussed. Uh, we can have that on the succeeding hearings. Uh, of course, as I said earlier, uh, we called in such short notice, ma'am. We only invited them starting Friday, and uh, because we were only appointed to, to the position only Wednesday uh, of last week. So, also to our friends in the BTC, I commensurate your problem, Mr. Secretary. Wala pa palang pondo ito mga kaibigan natin. Walang sweldo na ilang buwan na. Uh, they've been calling me to ask me for tickets to fly them here. Unfortunately, I, we don't have the budget uh, for that. Uh, baka naman the Office of the President can help them with their budgeting. Uh, awawa naman, baka out of pocket na yung mga pagpunta nila dito, they come from Mindanao. And like the tickets in these last two weeks have been horrendous. Maybe the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee can see how much money these airlines are actually making. Uh, with their people. Di naman tumaas ang presyo ng gasolina eh, uh, ng fu airline uh, fuel, but uh, they're charging horrendous amounts on tickets. So, yes, when I, uh, whenever I Senator Whenever I hear pondo, I get agitated because there's daming pondo. So, I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Chairman. May I just know from the BTC, under what is your budget launched? Under the OP? If it's under the OP, uh, there's a big, there's big funds. So there's no reason why walang pondo. And daming pondo, 2.5 B. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, That's only the intel. Oh, yeah. uh, Commissioner Loena, is it true that... Um, thank you, ma'am. The funds of the Office of the Bangsamoro Transition Commission is we are actually pursuant to Executive 8. We are under the Office of the Executive Secretary. And uh, I think it's just in the processing of these uh, documents. So let it not be said. I just want to correct the misimpression because... If we say walang fondo, that means Congress did not anticipate the creation of the BTC and we did not fund you, or did we defund you? Now, that's why I'm checking now with the Senate Elvierimo if in the 2017 budget we put your funds there under the OES and how much is it? If we have the funds, we'll give you the information and you can ask for it from the OES and then work out for the uh, release to your office from DBM. Yes, ma'am. I think the problem is because last 2017, we are not yet a locally funded office. We are still attached to the office of the Executive Secretary. Office of the ES has funds yes, also yes. to support the activities of the Transition Commission. That's correct, but the, in the processing, they are, there are requirements. So the requirements in there are requirements, so if there are meetings such as this, it's very difficult to immediately process. Uh, the, the they need the for this okay. particular but uh, the, the, in another on another note the some of our personnel have not yet been paid principally because there are also other requirements which the office of the president are very strict in securing so so I think in the 2018 we were informed that we will now be included as a locally funded office so that the management of our funds will already be given directly to the office of the chairman of the BTC, but it will come only in 2018. The problem is in 2017 because there was no money for the BTC and we are not considered locally funded. So we were attached to the office of the president and the funds is the fund of the executive secretary. Necessarily, the requirements for the release of funds are tedious because you have to submit it from Mindanao, goes to Manila, and we are just part of the many agencies within the Office of the okay. Executive Secretary. Thank you, Commissioner. I'd like to recognize Commissioner Abbas, uh, sir. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. I don't know if the uh, receiving of salaries is uniform. I just want to speak for myself. In fairness to the Office of the Executive Secretary, I received my salary from January to September. I received it on uh, September. It was delayed, but I received it. As of now, we haven't received yet our salaries for the succeeding months. But we have received 
salary from the office of the executive secretary. Thank you. We take note of that. Actually, I was told about that, Commissioner, and uh, we will uh, make the manifestations uh, yes. directly to the office of the executive secretary. Uh, we are more concerned about the salaries of the members of our staff. They yes. really haven't received their salaries. My driver has been driving for me since January. Up to this date, he still has to get a single centavo. Uh, we take note of that. Uh, Commissioner, we'll make representations uh, to the national Mr. government. Chairman. Se Senator Lauren Legarda, okay. we're lucky that our finance uh, chair is here. Uh, yes, yeah. ma'am. Mr. Chairman, could I request the Office of the Transition Commission? It's 1227. Uh, before sunset today, to submit to, the, to my office uh, exactly what your problem is, how much salaries should be paid, should have been paid, uh, what MOE, transport, etc. did you already use and needs refund or reimbursement? And what was the situation that uh, Mr. Abba said uh, because it was under the OES and now it's uh, locally funded? I want to understand the situation better. Just say a complaint letter to me and I will find out. I will call ES, I will call DBM Sec Jokno and find out where does the problem lie? Is it in your requirements, kung may requirements po, fulfill nyo yung masalimuot na requirement, ganyan talaga, baka makuha eh. Ngayon, authorized ba yung inyong pag-hire ng driver, ng mga tao, authorized ba yung mga trips nyo, may authority, ganun. So, fulfill all the requirements, then then, we'll work it out before the Friday break for Christmas. Mm -mm. Para may sagot po, kasi I can call DBM, eh, it, eh, hindi ko makatarungan, magpapasko, walang sweldo ng tatlong buwan, anin na po. Mr. Chair, mm. uh, Yes, uh, Just to state for the record that we provided, knowing the situation uh, up up uh, within its limited uh, capability, provided some bridging fund for them, but it's not enough. Thank you, Secretary. I know how government works, so there's so many red tape, you know, in other words, to release all these funds. So with the support of our committee, together with the support of Sec Senator Legarda, who's our uh, very tireless... Uh, fighter for national government agencies funding. And, and charming. And, and charming, charming, I know. Nobody can say no to her. Um, so we, before we, uh, we, we'd like to recognize you, Sekna Biltan, and then after you, Sekna Biltan, we'd also like to recognize members of the Def Defense Department that are here, uh, and also the DILG for quick uh, statements. Uh, you, Sekna Biltan, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to support and welcome the uh, uh, observation of uh, Senator Lauren Legarda regarding the budget support uh, because I for one experienced that when we established the first ARMM with, uh, during the time of the late President Cory Aquino under Republic Act 6734 we were the first elected officials of ARM. We have to navigate through the wide bureaucracy of government because it was the first time that it's being implemented. And there was always no funds. That's why many executive issuances were issued up to the time of President GMA, EO125, to come out with a cuts-up development fund. And partly, I guess, the failure of the previous arm was the non, uh, uh, lack of uh, budgetary support because the entire bureaucracy was not ready for autonomy at that time. And the plebiscite was held 1989, the first Republic Act 6734 because b before it got amended by Republic Act 9054, which is the expanded organic act. Every time you go to DBM the, or the government offices, they will tell you, you're autonomous already. But what was the bulb was only salaries of the devolved agencies. And at that time, there was only millions for us before the Ampatuans came, succeeding administration came, it became bigger. Ours was five billion to include all salaries, and there was no development fund given. We were supposed to receive 630 million as seed money for infrastructure, but during our time, the first three years, we were released only, there were only one release during the th first three years of the first ARMM in 1990 to 93. So I guess that's a real and eminent danger in times of timing uh, to come out with certain budget so that it can be incorporated into the net 
because when it's the time frame is lapse on the passage of this budget, there will be difficulty even on the supplemental budget that will be very limited. You cannot ask really what is what is uh, desired or what is appropriate. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Yusek Nabiltan. Again, it's well, I welcome your participation in this. Your long experience on the peace process together with Sec Jess will come in very handy in uh, crafting a final uh, Bank Samoro basic plan. We have gotten old already doing this, and we hope that before we die, we're able to see the light of the day. You know? As I said, sir, I guarantee you, you know how I work in legislation. Tututukan ko to hanggang matapos natin to. Hopefully by March, as long as there's no uh, other, um, uh, I would say, distractions from other uh, of our legislative work, we will prioritize this. Problema lang namin, there's so much talk about other issues like uh, impeachment and all that. So uh, that's why I want to hasten the hearings, and I need the support. That's why we need the support of the BTC. Sir, maybe you can uh, help me with our budget because we're going to do a lot of hearings uh, once again in the other areas uh, of our country, especially in the armed areas. Um, with that, uh, I'd like to recognize also Yusek Yano, our Undersecretary for Defense Operations. Yusek, uh, how is the Defense Department, uh, what is the stand of the Defense Department on this particular issue? Uh, Your Honor, sa the Department of National Defense uh, fully supports the passage of uh, BBL. Hindi naman kayo mawawala ng ano, no, jurisdiction. In other words, uh, the Bangsa Moro uh, basic law once approved and creates the new Bangsa uh, Moro land or, 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 or autonomous region, will um, uh, you will still be uh, in place uh, in terms of external and internal defense? Uh, yes, Your Honor, because uh, the law provides uh, clearly that uh, the def defense of uh, the responsibility of the defense of the region is uh, uh, the central government, meaning uh, the armed forces still has uh, full control of uh, the armed forces assigned in that region. Thank you. No worries. We'd like to also uh, hear, but on the succeeding hearing, we'd like to also ask uh, our good friend, Secretary Delphine Lorenzana, to join us in our next briefing. Because on the next briefing, I'd like to ask all government agencies on their stand on the particular issue, on the, on the BBL, on the new BBL submitted by the Bank Samoro Transition Commission. Um, it's, a new, it's a new proposal, and I'd like to ask these uh, different uh, um, high-level government officials on their comments uh, of their departments on this issue. Thank you, Yusek. Uh, Yes, Your Honor, I, I, will, I will convey to the Secretary. Actually, uh, the Secretary just came in from uh, Kamigin. Yes, Your sir. Honor. Yes, sir. I know it's, uh, as again I said, it's short notice, so we don't blame anybody. Uh, Brigadier General, uh, uh, I cannot see your. Raniel. Ramil, uh, sir. Yes, could you uh, give us your comments, sir? Sir, for the Armed Forces of the Philippines, uh, last. Uh, December 7, during the command conference presided by the Chief of Staff General Ray Leonardo Guerrero, he emphasized that uh, the AFP will continue to support the peace initiatives of government. And um, he also um, uh, granted the hosting of the BBL advocacy at GHQ last December 4. So uh, attendees of uh, the BBL advocacy came from um, the senior officials of the PNP, the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Defense Department. So we were basically given a, a uh, good knowledge on uh, Bangsamoro, but there were some discussions and uh, most of us were clarified, sir. So for the Armed Forces of the Philippines, we fully support the um, uh, passing of the bill. Thank you, uh, General. Colonel uh, Ampatuan, uh, would you like to give a statement? Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, I'm just part of the uh, AP RIP, sir. But uh, as a Mindanaoan and from uh, Maguindanao, sir, uh, we, the Muslims uh, officers of the armed forces fully supports the uh, uh, peace agenda of the government. Thank you. Thank you very much, Colonel. Um, Dr. Jaime Ramirez of the Office of Muslim Affairs at the ILG, would you like to uh, give a comment or statement? Oh, hindi na po. Hintayin nyo na po si... Kayo po si Dr. Ramirez? 
Ano po? Kayo po siya? Okay. Uh, ako po ay uh, retired sa UP, uh, Journalism and Communication. But I was assigned in the uh, Office of Muslim Affairs sa uh, DLG. Now, ang problema dito, alam niyo, noong 1964, I was in Mindanao. Helping the Muslims, matagal yun. Wala pa kayo mga kumpa. Kaya, ang problema ngayon nangyari dito, wala pang iminilip, eh, wala pang imay. Ilaga at saka barakuda yan nung una. So, ngayon, maganda ang Mindanao. Wala pang problema. Now, 1964 yun, pupunta ko doon. So, I spent 20 years in Mindanao helping the Muslims. Kaya, yan, pumasok ang mga Kristiyano pumunta sa Mindanao. So, yun, ang so, uh, Kotabato, isa pa lang. Dinivide, mga power-power yan, ginawa nila. So, divide ang, ang Kotabato, naging madami na. So, yun, nawala ang problema ang mga Muslim doon. So, yun, katapos sa Sulu, so, isa pa lang ang Sulu. So, I help in the creation of the Tawi-Tawi Kawawa, ang mga Tausog. At was 1960s pa yan, kaya I was there, 65. So, so yun, ang problema kaya nagkaroon ng ito, ay bahay ka sa kakawa yun. Wala pa yan. So, yun, I help the Muslim 20, 20 years helping them. I was based in Marawi City. Alam ko yung problema nila doon, tungkol sa madrasa at saka lahat-lahat yan. Ano, ayun, si Juan? <laughs> Pero daw si Mungkong namin sa Mindanao. I was based in Marawi City. So, helping the Muslim. So, yun, maganda ang Mindanao noong panahon na yun. Nung nag-divide-divide na ang area sa Mindanao, nabadami ng uh, probinsya for power uh, purposes, gerrymandering, mga ginagawa yan. Yun, nagkagulo. So, yun, pumasok yung Ilaga at saka Barakuda. So, sino ang kwando? Hindi is the Muslim uh, Independence Movement led by Utog Matalam and then si Mayor uh, uh, Robin Canoy, Mindanao Independence Movement. I help also this group. Doc, uh, we were so, kaya ito time, maganda so, itong ginagawa mo. Binasa ko itong one more proposal mo at saka kay Senator uh, Senator uh, Coco Bimintil. Uh, maganda itong dalawa. So, maganda itong dalawa ito. But ito naman, itong kay sa bangsa, ako nila, maganda rin. But ang question dyan, kahit maso-approban ito, gulo pa rin ang Mindanao. Kahit ang Maranao, Tausog, Maguindanao, hindi yan magtugma ang tatlo. Kaya itong uh, ito, ito, para sa Maguindanao, sabi nila, sabi naman ni eh, Normie Suarez, studyante yun namin yan, uh, kayo, Uh, maginda daw. Sabi naman ni Mayor, I help also ni Triple A Agreement pa na ako ni uh, Glor, uh, Madam uh, uh, Marcos pag approval ng Triple A because I author the biography of Kadapi. 1976 yan, ako ang author. So yan, akong Pilipinong unang nagsulat ng libro ni Kadapi biography na pinatay ng Amerikano yan. yan. Kaya yon ang problema ng Mindanao hindi yan masusul, bakit aprobahan nyo itong ito, ito, ito? Hindi. At saka isa pa sabi pa yung uh, maganda nga ito. Kat restructure yung arm, maganda yung arm. Bakit? E eh, wala namang gulo yung arm. Pag pumasok itong uh, inaprobahan yung unang panahon ng kondon. So unconstitutional. Eh sabi naman ni eh, President K. Duterte ito. Ngayon, Diario sa Manila Times, sabi niya, headline niya, Duterte. BBL does not comply with constitution. So, mayroong statement dito. Kaya kahit anong gawin yun, bakit gagawa tayo ng parlamento doon? Ano ba ang sistema ng gobyerno natin? Presidential. So, this is corporable violation of the constitution. So, magkaroon ka ng uh, parlamento katapos yan. Yan ang kwanto, ang sinasabi ni kwanto. So, hindi niya sinabi yung provision. But binasa ko rin ito talaga, ito tatlo. So magaganda nga ito. So bakit hindi natin i-strengthen itong arm, creating the arm? Mag wala namang problema. Ayang maranaw, maganda raw, tausok, hindi ba nag-aaway? 
kasi gusto ba nila yung arm? So, kailangan lang yan doon. Eh, structure ang uh, arm, maganda yan. So, eh, kung lang ito, gawin natin, eh, hindi abolish yung arm, eh, sasama dito. Yun, lahat yung mga provision dito, i-integrate, eh, kulak yun to one. Pagkatapos, ito isasama yun. Thank yan, you, maganda. Okay. So, yan, wala nang gulo. Okay, Pag sinabi, hindi satisfied ang Maranao, kami pupunta sa bundok. Yes, so, sabi niya, okay, sinabi niya, Enor Miswari, nung nandun kami sa Libya, nung uh, hearing ng Kwandon, ng uh, Philippine National Altem, sabi niya, Miswari, I am not a Filipino. Sabi niya, sirang ulo ka. Sabi ko kay Miswari nung doon kami doon sa Libya. Pilipino ka. Kay ang ginagamit mo, passport, Pilipin. Hindi ka okay. ganyan. Doctor, kasi we're so, running, we're pressed of time. Ito. So, so doctor. yun ang magandang gagawin natin. Okay, doc. Tungkol dito sa Mindanao. Oh, salamat, doc. So, yun ang gagawin natin. Thank you. Salamat kasi po. we're pressed for time. Uh, we have to to head out. Uh, Senator Lauren Legarda also has to head out. But that, that would be the... Uh, this may be parts of the debate when we go to our consultative hearings in the provinces. Uh, so be ready, uh, Bang Samoro Transition Council, to answer the uh, the opposition side to BBL. Atamayan, and we welcome that. We welcome that. He's suggesting that maybe we should not uh, let go of the arm and only strengthen it. So there are many uh, sides to the stories here, which we will welcome all of them at the proper time. But today is really just a briefing on the Bank Samoro Transition Council Commission's proposal. And then we will welcome all the debates on the next hearing, where we will also invite, we'll have one hearing on cabinet members. Then we'll have one hearing on the constitutionalists. And we'll discuss constitutionality. But before we go, Attorney Rasul, you want to give the final statement? And we'll ask Senator Sani and uh, Senator Lauren to join us for a historic first hearing photograph on BPL. Your Honor, if I may, read the position paper of the Philippine Center for Islam and Democracy. Uh, President Duterte has endorsed the passage of the proposed Bangsamora Basic Law in his State of the Nation address last July 24 and his speech at the Bangsamora Assembly last November 27. He has recognized the need for the Bangsamora Basic Law and has made his promise to hasten the passage of this law as he has deemed the passage as sacred and important. The proposed legislative measure is indeed the manifestation of the peace agreement between the Philippine government and the Mora Islamic Liberation Front, which also builds on the grant of autonomy after the peace agreements with the Mora National Liberation Front, it was lamentable, really, after the comprehensive agreement on the Bangsamoro, the CAB, was signed, that the massacre in Mama Sapano had effectively shut the doors to the passage of the BBL by the Philippine government. In addition to this, questions on the constitutionality of the law eventually cropped up. In 2015, the National Peace Council was created, comprising of the former Chief Justice Hilario Davide, Archbishop Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagle, Ambassador Howard T., Jaime Augusto Sobel de Ayala, and Attorney Christian Monson, for the purpose of building the support for the peace talks and the passage of the BBL. In its report, the Council noted that the proposed measure does not violate the Constitution because, one, it does not make the Bangsamoro government a state. Second, that the Bangsamoro government affirms the powers of the national government that is in consonance with the 1987 Constitution. And third, it is consistent with the allocation of powers mandated by the Constitution relative to the intergovernmental relationship between national government and the Bangsamora government. And fourth, it recognized that the Supreme Court and the constitutional bodies shall continue to maintain the powers that are given to them under the Constitution. And fifth, that it adheres to the provision of the Constitution on the process of the creation of the autonomous region through a plebiscite. In this light, the provisions in the proposed BBL are in harmony with the Constitution. 
and in this respect, we would like to reiterate what former Chief Justice Davide said in the council meeting, saying that the BBL does not guide the interpretation of the Constitution. Rather, the Constitution guides the interpretation of the BBL. In order to support the peace agreement with the MILF, the BBL must be consistent with the CAB. Effective autonomy must be secured for the Bank Samoro, certainly a small price to pay to end the demand for independence of the liberation forces, both the MILF and the MNLF. During various conferences and forums conducted by our center this year, the passage of the Bank Samora Basic Law as drafted by the BTC has been strongly recommended. The conferences include the Conference on Peace and the Prevention of Violent Extremism in Southeast Asia, which was held last September 22 to 23 at the Philippine International Convention Center, Engaging Women in the Prevention of Violent Extremism with, uh, conducted with the Women and Gender Institute of Miriam College held last May 30 to 31st at the Crown Plaza and the recently concluded consultative forum on the role of the religious in building community resiliency against violent extremism, which was conducted last December 2 to 3 at Simeo in a tech. Upon the consultations and recommendations gathered from various sectors during this different uh, fora, the call for the passage of the BBN has again been reiterated on the following grounds. One, to achieve the main purpose of the past agreements between the Philippine government and the liberation movements in Mindanao, which includes lasting peace and genuine autonomy. Second, to promote social justice and further human development that will remedy the injustices inflicted upon the Bang Samora in the past, including the loss of their sovereignty when the independent sultanates were included in the Republic of the Philippines upon the grant of independence by the United States. And third, to help secure public order, safety, and human security as a response to the increasing discontent with major liberation movements and as a, and as a response to counter and prevent the recurrence and emergence of violent extremism in communities that affected and are vulnerable to conflict. Ultimately, Congress should finally consider and decide on the long-standing call of the Bang Samora people since the 1976 Tripoli Agreement, four decades ago, for the true granting of the aspirations of peace, unity, development, and genuine autonomy for the Bang Samora homeland. In closing, while we strongly adhere and revere the democratic principles embedded in our Constitution, that bind us together as one people under one nation, there is a concomitant obligation on the part of the majority to protect the rights of the minority and not substitute their major, uh, the majority's will over the un unequivocally articulated aspirations of the Bang Samora people. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Senator Gachalian. Mr. Chair, just uh, a few clarificatory questions to the BTC. I was just taking notes earlier. Ito pong black grant is on top of the ERA? Or wala na pong ERA? How, how does it work? Commissioner uh, jury. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, the black grant is uh, intended to be given to the Bank Samora government so that it can um, operationalize its mandates and uh, implement programs and uh, projects in accordance with the powers. But the ERA uh, will continue to be given to the local government units. But the regional government also gets ERA, no? No. W wala silang no. ERA. So it's given to the provinces, municipalities, yes. and barangays. So the arm, sir, is uh, treated like an ordinary national government agency. It submits its budget to the DBM, 
for approval to uh, of Congress. So in, in lieu of that, uh, in lieu of that, they will get the block the grant. The block grant. Okay. That's the proposal, sir. And then the kanina ho na mention yung parang 10% of the registered voters, no, if they want to opt in. What was the logic for the 10%? Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The logic is really the initiative law which was passed by the House in Congress. The initiative law, as provided in the Constitution, has been provided for also in a law passed by Congress, that any, that the citizen, in order to participate in the decision-making, can do it by initiative. An initiative of 10%, but the decision to participate will only happen if it is voted by the majority of the people living there. So we borrowed that from the initiative law. It's, a, it's people's initiative. People's initiative. And yeah. that the 10% is uh, a formula used in the in initiative people, law. People's initiative uh, action. Yes. Okay. And then, but uh, that will mm. trigger you, no? Uh, and then, pagpapasok na siya sa plebiscito. Yeah. The, the, the initiative will have to be approved by the majority, then papasok siya sa plebiscito. And then, uh, lastly, uh, Commissioner, dito sa exploitation exploration development utilization uh, there's a distinction between natural resources and uh, fossil fuel correct so sa national resources po right now as as we speak uh, anong revenue na generate sa ng arm uh, on natural resources do you have that figure in mind is is, is this provision existing in in the arm law yes me uh, the provision in arm law is that the, the all natural resources belongs to the arm, except strategic minerals, which is enumerated. In the enumeration of strategic minerals, there is one mineral which was not included. And that is, uh, I think, the mine, that this is the uh, chromite. So there is a taxing law of the arm that charges taxes on chromite mining operation. So they have derived some taxes from that. Uh, but in the provision of the new BBL, in order to do away with the definition of strategic minerals, we already classified it through using the technical meaning of the non-metallic, metallic, and fossil fuels. But since only fossil fuels are strategic, then the classification is all mines goes to arm except fossil fuels, where there would be co-management and a sharing of 50-50. All the rest goes to arm. So in other words, ulitin ko po, no? natural resources, everything accrues to the arm, or to, in this case, the Bank Samoro. Then fossil fuel, 50-50. Ngayon po sa natural resources, meron na bang revenue uh, being generated by the present regional government? Yes, in fact, they are deriving benefit from the mining operations in Tawi-Tawi on uh, Romite. But they don't get 100%? Uh, there is supposed to be a formula for sharing, which is also 50-50. But uh, you mentioned earlier, dahil strategic minerals ang ginamit, hindi nakukuha 100%. Na? Y y Tama po ba? Yes, under the strategic minerals formula, the sharing and the current arm law is 50-50 also. So, but in this proposal, wala nang strategic, it's metallic and non-metallic. So, in that case, you mentioned earlier that mining, everything now accrues to the uh, Bank Samoro. In mining, uh, all re mining resources goes to Bank Samoro excepting only the fossil fuels. Yes, yes, yes. I yes. understand that. So, all, na yes. Na nakahiwalay siya. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Yes, we'll discuss that more lengthy when all the other government agencies are here with us. Was there questions like earlier I mentioned about the province that opts out, out not to join the ARM or the BBL <coughs> that are already included in ARM? Can you answer that uh, briefly, uh, Commissioner? Yes, because we want to preserve the intent of the Constitution under Article 10, the autonomy provision. If we allow the, the, and secondly, the plebiscite question for ARM is whether the core provinces of ARM is not whether they want to be part of that autonomy, but whether they want to change their organic act from the current 1954 okay. to the BBL. So they remain. So they remain. Okay. That's a clarificatory question. All right. So, uh, 
Um, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, sir. Commissioner Abbas, sir. I'm sorry, but perhaps when this matter was taken up, I was absent. I don't know when and where it was taken up, but I have to speak before I would be considered to have acquiesced. And I have a personal attachment to this issue. Article 10 of the Constitution precisely was debated in the case of Abbas versus Comelec, where we questioned Republic Act 6734 as violative of the Triple Agreement. And furthermore, it violates the principle of majority rule because uh, even if only two provinces will opt to form the autonomous region, there will still be an autonomous region. And the Supreme Court, through Justice Irene Cortez, who was my professor in political law at the UP College of Law, they ruled that what determines is the majority of the constituent units in each political area in the province or in the municipality. And therefore, in the plebiscite of 13 provinces, only around two opted and the Supreme Court said there is still an autonomous government. Of course, uh, there's something which is anomalous here, but that is the decision of the Supreme Court. And this decision was precisely invoked by the people in the Cordilleras when they had the plebiscite and only one province opted. And they precisely cited the decision of Abbas versus Comelec. But the Supreme Court, in a very comic statement actually, comical to most lawyers. Well, in the, in the Cordilleras, there's only one province that opted. So one province cannot form an autonomous government. So the rule of law, as the Supreme Court precisely has issued and enunciated, what determines membership in the autonomous region is the majority of the constituent units in each province and city or or municipality that has opted to join it and not the totality of votes in it. I have to state this, uh, contrary to my colleague's uh, opinion or the proviso which precisely, which was contained here, but this would be considered unconstitutional. So it's best that we remedy it here, right here and now. Well, you know, we are going to invite anyway, uh, former members of the Supreme Court to shed uh, uh, their uh, light on these issues, particularly the constitutionality of provisions of the BPL. Maybe we can have that on the next hearing as we are pressed for time. But if you want to briefly uh, uh, react to Commissioner Lorena, uh, you may to do so. I'd just like to mention that there are two questions. Not in the old BPL, there is only one question. But we adopted the formula of Republic Act 1954, where we only asked the, the, there were two questions. Those for already organized autonomy and those who will be joining. In this uh, BBL, the question for those already part of the autonomy is whether they would ratify the Bagsamoro Basic Law as a new organic act. No longer whether to join the new autonomy. But the other question is for the, those who have voted in 2001, but which has not been incorporated to the autonomy. They will be given a second chance to decide whether they want to be part of the autonomy or not. So this is the two questions. In the case of the first question, the determining whether the BBL will become the organic act is the majority vote of the original configuration of the present autonomy. But in those areas where they are just joining, it will be determined by the, num by the provinces, cities. So the, the two questions that are too different. The one is whether you ratify this as your new organic act in place of Republic Act 1954. This pertains to the organized autonomy. And the second one is whether you want to join the autonomous region. Okay. Thank you very much, Commissioner. So with that, um, I would like to move to suspend uh, this hearing for another hearing on the, by the third week of January when we're back to work, by January 15th. <coughs> and um, after we do this suspension of this committee hearing, I would like to ask the members of the BTC, our resource persons, especially, especially rather Secretary uh, Durez and Yusek Nabiltan, members of the Defense Department, to join us for this historical picture for the first hearing of the new Bangsamoro Basic Law uh, hearings. Thank you, Mr. President. We now. Uh,
move to suspend uh, this session at uh, the committee hearing till uh, the third week of January. Thank you so much for everyone attending today, including our colleagues. Thank you.